Have either of you guys heard of the writer? Is it Brandon Sanderson? No. No, but now I'm typing his name into a computer. Big, big fantasy author person. Oh, yeah, it's coming up right away. Wow. Yeah. Someone's name I hear on the periphery a lot. Sounds very like this generation George or or Martin oh. kind of person. Oh, I know who this guy is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to read his his book because um I think like in in one video a million years ago I think his his kid watches me or something there was some crossover there and mm. people were like Brandon Sanderson talked about you in a video with, with with no no offense to the guy I just don't know who that is because I don't read a lot of fantasy but um his name has come up a bit over the years and especially recently I think because he released like some big new super super well received book and so I decide okay I'm going to read the first book of the Mistwalker legacy and let's see what this guy's all about and let's see what's going on here. And therein lies the problem because Brandon Sanderson did not write the book Mistwalker. He wrote the book Mistborn. Yeah, that's what it's saying here. Yes, but I already spent my monthly audible credit on Mistwalker. John, John, what you do is you say you want to cancel your account and they give you a free credit. I just did it earlier on. I did it too. Yeah. <laughs> they kept asking me Would you that. guys like to hear the sample for the fantasy epic, The Mistwalker? Is this Absolutely. Just, is this just like junk fantasy? My eyes snapped open. Instead of the familiar decor of my bedroom, I saw an endless void swirling with mist. So far, so good. My lips parted to scream, but a moan escaped me instead. Oh. As my lover's tongue stabbed into my core. John, can you put it closer to the mic? Impossibly long and thick, it darted in and out of me, flooding me with waves of sinful pleasure. Dark, Is vaporous tendrils sex? wrapped around me, caressing, exploring, setting my skin on fire despite their cool feel. My mind shouted for me to pull away, resist, fight. But my body fully surrendered yeah, to the sensuous and oddly familiar assault. Come for me, my Jade. I wanted to say no, yell at him to release me. But my body complied, detonating with earth-shattering violence. Boneless, shaking with voluptuous tremors. I let myself float on the endless broom. The mist walker passed through me as one would walk through showering water. For an instant, we were one. His emotions seeping through me. Victory, possession, and insatiable desire. I shuddered. There's, there's, there's another minute left. I'm going to stop it there. Well, no, no, no. Um, okay, I'm so, so, so that's, uh, that's, that's, I guess, what I'm listening to this month. <laughs> Um, that sounds amazing adding it to my wish list uh, yep so uh, because I had to play with the audio deck I turned up the gain too loud for sinful pleasure so I'm really sorry everybody's yeah. ear, ear, ears yeah. um, like that, that that was way too loud yeah and part of me is like well I don't I don't I'm not really in the market to listen to a fantasy sex book but then another part of me is like like the responsible part of me is like you're going to listen to every fucking word of that book because this is the only way you'll learn. Yeah, yeah sure. That's the <laughs> that's the reason you're doing... I'm just Neve, saying... Neve, if guy... I want to fucking have weird John horny time, it's going to be in different ways than that. I don't know, okay? but maybe some audio erotica is the way... is, is a new fun. I'm a very thing. visual person, Neve. Yeah, I, I need to see the face fucking... It, look, it doesn't just, matter. I'm you just know? saying that's a lot of like... That he had a very silky voice, ghost tongue <laughs> going in and out. I'm... I'm, I'm <laughs> Seems all right to me. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not opposed. Neve's face is a bizarre kaleidoscope <laughs> of like horny imagery. This hell yeah. This is not the. She's. It's like she's eating a really sour candy apple. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the author that you thought you were looking for, Brandon Sanderson, he took over for Robert Jordan when he passed away and completed the Wheel of Time. Oh. oh. And he definitely didn't write Mist Walker. No, he wrote Mistborn. Okay. No, but he did put a lot of fucking in the Wheel of Time. One, 
Welcome to the Let's Fight a Boss video game podcast. To my left. No, I'm only, I'm only, I'm only playing. I'm only joking. The world's strongest video game podcast. I left that bit out last time. And there you go. Are you happy now, you little shit? People shits? were fucking furious. You know what? We're so strong, we don't even need to say it sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yep. And if you doubt us, you're weak. Yep. Absolutely. We'll bench your mom. Yep. Yeah. We will bench your mom. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what well, that's just what we're ready to do. That's, that's the name of this episode, Bench Your Mom. To my right, has literally never left the gym. It's Brian. I have fused my body with um, the rowing machine. That's the name of the piece of equipment. It at is. The gym. Deep, yeah, right? yep. I, I know what a rowing machine is. To my left, no face, no arms, no legs, just a mound of knotted muscle. It's Neve. Check out my new game, Scorn. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that, that ties in very well. Yeah, you know that 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 kind of that kind of works. Uh, Brian, yes. Tell me about Baby Assassin. Is that what this fucking thing is called? Baby Assassins. Uh, yes, I watched this. Actually, you know what? Cut it. Forget that. We have an announcement. Okay. Okay. Is that okay, Brian? I'm sorry. I forgot about the announcement. We gotta drop it at the very top of the show. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Okay, I'm going to give everyone uh, a moment to get ready, because this is some fucking big baby boy shit. Okay. Let's fight a boss. For the first time ever. We're going to MAGFest. All three of us. All three of us. We're all going to be there. We might be doing a panel. We will be doing a meetup. This is perhaps the only time... The three of us will be in the States. Every year I go to MAGFest, every year I meet a fucking ton of Let's Fight a Boss fans. This is your chance. If you want to see that we are in fact three separate people and not one tumultuous being, this is your chance to make that happen. It's going to be exciting. Brian, I need you to... This is, this is kind of a bit, but actually not a bit. I need you to set a bookmark for once we're done recording for a talk we have to have with Neve about conventions. You have to sign that code of conduct. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, no, no, like, I'm, uh, I'm good. Don't do want, worry. <laughs> I really, really want ribs at 2 a.m. That's what I want from the fans. Get me my ribs. I, Fago, I want to drink Fago. We didn't get to drink Fago last time we went to Magfest, uh, John, in, okay. in 2020. If, if someone wants to bring us specifically berry Fago, that I will drink. It, in, in a sealed can nothing yeah, else yeah no please please make sure you know the, the seal isn't broken because that's because that's happened in previous magfests and it's a bad time I would like to try a moon cake moon pie what a time to be alive whoa don't know what they are I, no I think it's just a normal piece of chocolate brine and what John, moon just pie like, no no yeah moon pie like. no because because moon cake you get them to the Chinese supermarkets okay yeah you, but like you the, can like, you can Neve you have full permission to try anything that comes in a sealed package. Okay. Okay, Neve, and um, this is the important thing. All three of us, we're going to drink the cough syrup with the drowsiness, and it's oh the my- only way. It's the only way you can get your body clock k- ticking. Brian, I, the two of your, <laughs> both of your minds work in such completely separate ways. I see what you thought and what you mean. Okay. There's a CVS in National Harbor and they do this like honey flavored cough syrup and one comes for daytime and then there's the nighttime one which is which says drowsy and you drink that you are doing oh, so well. Fuck jet lag. You are out for the night. Yeah. It's great. Okay. Yeah. It really rebalances yeah. stuff. Yeah. And I buy enough that I drink it back in Ireland because I like the cough syrup. <laughs> Brian. Yes. How about now you tell us about Funny Pages? Or not Funny Pages, Baby Assassin. Me and Brian watch Funny Pages. I don't have a lot to say on it that Brian didn't. What a movie. It's very good. I was in our local comic book shop earlier today. And I kept thinking about Funny Pages and I kept laughing. And the guy was like, why are you smiling? <laughs> like he was kind of like, you're right there having fun. And I was like, oh yeah, just very funny comics, man. I, I, I did the thing you recommended where I traded in a few bits and pieces and then I got store credit. Oh, cool. And then I got a comic that said that the guy said that the publishing group have just ended on their own terms and so they're not making any more of it and that's the last issue and i was like okay cool 
Uh, it was a very it's a cool sci-fi anthology uh, that I can't remember the name of, but maybe I'll read it next for next episode. Baby Assassins is a Japanese thriller comedy about two teenage girls. I think they're about 18, 19 years old. They have just graduated from high school uh, while working as part-time assassins. And their handler tells them, okay, now you have to get normal jobs to throw people off that you're assassins and you have to move in together. And the two girls are... Is there one bed? There's no bed. There's a couch. And you better believe they fucking share that couch, Neve. Uh, the two girls are called Chisato, who is an extrovert, and Mahilo, who's an introvert. Well, how, how are they going to get on? And a real odd couple. They work super well together as assassins, but it seems like they only know each other on a professional level. This is going to be them knowing each other on a personal level. And they are not into the idea of them moving in together. And, you know, they're both kind of from the same generation. So they kind of get along in that aspect. You know, they both like watching weird stuff on their phones and playing Switch. But it, when it comes to kind of them getting jobs, they're not good at it. Uh, they, they get a job at a maid cafe and the extrovert does super well. And she gets the job right away. And then the introvert isn't sure at all. But she gets the job because her friend applied. And it's a kind of a two for one deal. You, you either get both or you get none. Long story short, the Yakuza show up because uh, they want to buy the May Cafe. And on the day that the quiet girl decides not to show up for work, the Yakuza uh, hold everyone hostage. But fortunately, they have a secret assassin among the staff and she takes the Yakuza out, which leads to the Yakuza trying to track them down and they're going to have to come aside with their differences and fight to survive. It's a weird mixture of like the first half of the movie is about like the introvert girl and she's fantastic. She is played by, I think, like a 28 year old woman who's a stunt actor who's done stunts for the last couple of years. And this is her first like on camera, like face role, I guess. She, she's very quiet. She's very still. But there is a bit towards the end where there's a fight scene and the movie just turns into an action movie for about 10 minutes and they just go all out and it's fucking brilliant. Then the other girl, she gets most of the dialogue and her kind of story is more so in the second half. And her thing is she's just constantly digging herself deeper in with different people in the crime organization, just making things way worse. And it's a very funny thriller. Like, I didn't know a thriller could be funny because it is very suspenseful and a lot of people die and it's an unpleasant time. But it's really, really cute and sweet and it's got a lot of heart. And I'd highly recommend it to everyone. Like, it is violent... But in a way where you're like, that's a good practical effects. And it is a film about two teenage girls being best friends. Cute. Um, when did it come out? Last year. Oh, cool. And it was made on the cheap, but that's kind of part of the charm. There's a great bit where like they make up after a fight and one of them goes to the bakery and gets these big giant strawberry cakes. Like just like these big slices of strawberry cake. And they're about to bite into the cake, but they get a call that they have to get into like this big fucking fight. And this is at like near near the climax of the film. And so they have to put the cakes away into the fridge. But the way they do it is they just have like a little GoPro camera on the plate holding the cake. So it's just like cake cam. And they put the camera into the fridge and then they close the door and then the lights go out and then it cuts to the next scene. So like it's got some really, really fun shots. And like the end credits is just them hanging out on the couch. Like it kind of feels like like the loading menu of a weird video game. Cool. Very, very fun. Neve. Yes. You watched listened to the lolita podcast yeah sometimes to unwind me and my girlfriend like to listen to a podcast while we both play video games on the couch and it's a fun activity yeah and i picked the lolita podcast uh i don't know if either of you have read the 1955 book lolita from vladimir nabokov is that how you say it i've just seen the kubrick film hmm. i've never read it i've heard I've heard people talk about it in video essays. It's a very infamous book. Yes, that's the point of this podcast is whether you've read it, whether you've seen the movie, whether you've heard about it, you kind of have an idea what Lolita is or might be. And like trigger warning, if you know what Lolita is, it is about a pedophile called Humbert Humbert who um, kidnaps and rapes a 12 year, year old girl over a period of time. And the podcast is looking at the book as the book's narrative, but also the kind of cultural 
idea of Lolita and what that became through the movies and through people's perception about what the book is. It's a really, really interesting podcast. It's hosted by Jamie Loftus, who you might have heard from stuff like Stuff You Should Know. She's like guested on it a few times. It's an iHeartRadio podcast. So you're dealing with really, really heavy subject matter, but like it is presented to you in a way that's very easy to, to digest where multiple times I was like what the fuck <laughs> but I was also like very entertained it's a very educational podcast and just like as like a, a feminist who read this book in college and found it really upsetting and really disturbing um, it's interesting to revisit it again in this critical way looking at the author's life really interesting life um, looking at the books just like the space it takes up in culture and the kind of like one of the when I think of Lolita as well like there's a I think they're either Australian or New Zealand there's a band called the Veronicas and they have a song called Lolita I love the Veronicas yeah the Veronicas great rock bands. yeah <laughs> and that song is a banger but it's just like the idea of Lolita became this like child who was like this like you know seductress and stuff like that and it's like the book is actually extremely damning of Humbert Humbert but it's one of these stories about where the book doesn't tell you the guy is bad the guy is trying to convince you he's a good guy because it's from his perspective so it kind of takes it's 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 on you the reader and thus there's a lot of interpretations of what the book is about like some people think it's a love story which is fucked you know so it's just yeah it's a really interesting podcast that really talks to a lot of people who are experts in this book and really just breaks it down in terms of like its cultural re relevance in a patriarchal society and I found it really fascinating sometimes really hard to listen to but always entertaining and if you're someone who finds any of that interesting um i really can't recommend it enough it was a really really good listen cool that sounds great i consumed a piece of media with i would say equal cultural relevance and gravitas uh nightmare before elm street 3 the dream warriors fuck yeah i love that movie that's, yeah. a, that's a great film <laughs> that's a fun movie this movie is is great it's real peak freddy in terms of just the sheer lunacy of the kills here i think this might have nearly all my favorite Freddy Krueger kills. Absolutely. They're absolutely... You got Worm Freddy. Mm -hmm. He turns into a sink at one point. Syringe fingers. Syringe fingers. He's, he's a television. When I was growing up, this was my favorite Nightmare Before Elm Street movie. And watching it now, it's still great. The first 40 minutes particular are just a fucking roller coaster. They're so, so good. There is a section in the middle of the movie where it does kind of bog down and get very, like, lost in Freddy lore. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot about his mom who was in the Saiyan Asylum and, like, <laughs> at one point there's some really fucking weird, like, Freddy dancing skeleton. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, I see, I'd forgotten yeah, about yeah. all that bit. <laughs> um, but, you know, like, in terms of schlocky horror movie, the best parts of this movie are, like, the best schlocky horror movies can give you know is this the one where it's the teenagers and they're in a sleep hospital being monitored yes. yeah they're they're like all like disturbed yeah, children. yeah. And, and and they all have trouble sleeping and they're in the collective dream so it's Freddy. not really it's not really a sleep hospital it's like a, a, a hospital a kind of psych ward for troubled children okay. who all start having sleep problems yeah and it's that Freddy starts terrorizing them, and then in the latter half they team up and fuck him back, yep. don't they? And they set it's like it's a bit like Home Alone, or like they're setting traps. And there's a gymnast who uses so gymnastics. They, they don't really set traps. They um, they manifest different superpowers because they're yeah. in the dream. They're yeah, like, really. okay, so we can. One girl turns into a gymnast. Uh, a boy turns into a wizard. Um, a guy go to a guy is able has super strength, and then the girl she manifests like this really cool outfit, but her only real power is that she has knives. And I kind of feel like maybe would have pushed. Yeah, because like for me, what I remember with this was that the teenagers acted more like kids than the teenagers did in the first and second movie. Very much so. Yeah, like they're more childish and like, they like have one imagination. One of them is literally like, I'm gonna become the wizard master. I'm not like certain, but I think this might be of a TV movie. I don't think it got a cinema release, or like maybe I'm completely. I've, I have no wrong. idea. Definitely, like it's got budget, mm. but 
that would kind of make sense for how uneven the movie is because mm-hmm. it's like first 30 minutes are just fucking balls to the wall so much fun then there's the kind of dead bit in the middle then the ending's kind of fun it was like meant to be like the end of Freddy Krueger like this was meant to be like the final act in his story that did not happen no there's been like that's the third one I think there's been like 12 total yeah but um, it's it's very fun it's, it's really really well made there's some excellent like camera work and the music the end credits song is called Dream Warriors and it's one of the best songs of all time um, there's a special music video where the the band that sing the song Dream Warriors get sucked into a dream and they fight and defeat Freddy and the end of the music video is Freddy going, whoa, who were those guys? <laughs> um, it wasn't a TV thing. I just saw it on TV when I was younger. Hey, it happens. Um, what do you think is the best Freddy movie? Because going back rewatching them, I'm always taken aback by kind of how schlocky they are, and oh, don't yeah. so and they don't like hold up in the same way that maybe some of the Halloweens do. Like know? I would really have trouble. I really the like first, the original. The first Halloween movie still scares me. Oh yeah, like still. Oh, what a fucking. What's the Freddy movie, movie where it's meta and it's not even called Freddy Krueger? That's Wes Craven's Nightmare or American something like Nightmare, that. Or something, yeah, like something like that. Something like that. Where where they're on a production of a new Freddy Krueger movie mm. and he invades the production. Yeah, that one's fun. I think, like in terms to term, like like just a good, better movie, Freddy versus Jason. It's like a uh, it's good been, time. Okay, that's I'm gonna stick that on my list because <laughs> mm-hmm. I need to watch that. I do love when two horror monster movies fight each other. I love I love the first movie in the just like what a perfect like birth of a monster. Yeah. You know? I think the second one actually has like legitimate interesting subtext. Well, it's and, got the gay panic. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Um, and then the third one is just it's just so much fun. Actually, a really strong opening trilogy of horror movies, I think. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. it's, 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 it's very consistent. Like, I don't know that you could... Like, when I think of, like, um, the first three Halloween movies, it's kind of like, I wouldn't say they, they have that same consistency. No, absolutely yeah. not. But the third and one then, like, it, the is first its own three, thing. Like, the first three Nightmare Friday the 13th movies, they're kind of only really getting rolling by that third one. Like, the first um, Friday the 13th, I am still kind of shocked at, like, what a simple movie that is. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's still great though. Like I still really like it. But so I don't know. Any, I think maybe the third one because the highs are just so high. You guys? Yeah, no, the first one. I love the first one. First or third? Yeah. Yeah. Like I haven't watched two in a long time, but like going back and revisiting with all the like gay subtext that like all the YouTubers explored, like maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe that it, one you know, will stick it's out. It's so fucking crazy to me because like. I think we're at a point where I don't know you can even view that as subtext anymore because those issues are more talked about and more discussed. Mm. Like, to me, it's just a movie about a gay kid or yeah. whatever it was. Just text. Yeah, like, it's it's just... But, like, I mean, th- obviously there was a point where that wasn't the case, but, right? Like, well, just, like, at the time, like, I'm, there's always... It reminds me of, like, there's this uh, history book image and it's, like, I don't... God, it's just two Greek statues fucking and it's just, like two friends wrestling and it's just like you know people just were didn't want to see it mm-hmm. and then that meant that like people could have got away with it is this the one where one guy's twisting the arm no no okay. this is just like full on like just full on because because yeah. yeah. in greek wrestling you, you, it's much it's much better this if you isn't are just me being like wrestling super gay which i do say all the time <laughs> she um, does this we've, is... <laughs> we've had that conversation so many times um, and no. it, it'll definitely come up because i watched the newest halloween movie and there's a bit of like the, the the male character is more interested in not his girlfriend and is more fascinated by someone else. Oh my god! It's it's not the best. It's it's better than the second one, but that's still quite oh, a low that bar. That was a pretty that shitty movie. That first movie was so oh, you know, good. It's so yeah. good. Yeah. The, the, How the fuck do they fuck it up so much? Yeah, the yeah, because the first one what, that came out in like twenty eighteen. Michelle I liked think? that movie so much after watching it with you that she was like, "We're gonna watch it," and we watched mm-hmm. it, and it was very good. Yeah, uh, the the first one was either in twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen. Twenty eighteen was fantastic. Then the one from last year, Halloween Kills, yeah. was super lame, and then Halloween Ends isn't much better, but it is Ugh. a bit better, but. It's like maybe 90% not good, but then 10% of it is really, really good. But it's still not. Okay. I, I, I've, I, I've... Who earns? 
I've I've added it to the folder, Neve. Okay, it's just like it's so disappointing that you could start with something like to, um, yeah, it's like 2018 so and like just have a kind of fizzle like that. And Jamie Lee Curtis is just on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, like hawking it all the time. And it's just like, is this where we are? Yeah, that that first movie just felt like it had so much like love in it. Mm-hmm. Like even just all the little bit characters were so well fleshed out and stuff. Like, uh, the, the, yeah, like like the new one has lots of Easter eggs, but. And this has Jamie Lee Curtis and John Carpenter as executive producers in the credits. Yeah. But I don't know how they didn't put their foot down for some of the story decisions that were made. Brian. Yes. Did you put your foot down for Marcel, Marcel the Shell with shoes on? Oh, my God. Do you guys know the original YouTube uh, short? I do. Uh, just yeah. about. Okay. Marcel the Shell with shoes on was a YouTube short that came out in 2010. And it was on this YouTube channel called Dean Fleischer Camp, which is the name of the dude that uploaded it. And at the time, it was his girlfriend, Jenny Slate, who is now very well known as like a voice actor and comedian personality that always guest stars in sitcoms. She's John Ralphio's sister in Parks and Rec. Oh, whoa. Um, so, she, you know, and she's she, she's in loads of like... She's class. She's really good. She's a very funny woman yeah. and she's in loads of like 3D animated features now and so on and so forth. But like, she's always a voice actor in things and she's great. But this is kind of when she was a bit more underground, I guess, uh, more than a decade ago. But it's a kind of improvised voice recording of... A boyfriend interviewing his girlfriend when she's doing a silly voice and she's uh, a one inch tall shell with shoes. And the idea is that it's a guy who's discovered this like object that is alive and he's interviewing the shell about and the shell's like a little boy and he's just interviewing him about like his hobbies and what he does. And he's so small that if he uses a hang glider, it has to be like a Dorito shell, I think. Uh, and it's, it's, it's very cute and whimsical, but now they've made a 90 minute feature film yeah. about that how do you get 90 minutes out of that okay so they do it so well they work it around the kind of before and after of that so it's the same guy dean and he is recently separated from his wife and he's staying in an airbnb and he's discovered that some of the inanimate objects are alive and he talks to this cute little shell called marcel and he starts interviewing him he starts compiling the footage and puts it up on YouTube and it becomes a viral sensation. Oh. And then from there, TikTokers are outside the house doing dances. <laughs> and Marcel explains that it's just him and his grandma now and his grandma is voiced by Isabella Rossellini. <laughs> Brilliant. And she's so fucking good. And like most of the movie is improvised. So it's just like this weird audio clips of just like, a woman who's kind of out of it just saying weird nonsense but then you're kind of like no she makes sense and they end up kind of becoming like internet famous and they end up going on to a broadcast show called 60 minutes which i'm sure if you're an american you know what that is i guess the irish equivalent is prime time it's the kind of thing like parents watch sure and they kind of signal boost out that marcel has been misplaced from the rest of his family because the house wasn't originally an Airbnb, but it was actually a house that belonged to a couple that got in lots of arguments and then separated. And so there's this running narrative of like people who are no longer in relationships with their significant other, but don't want to go into it. Behind the scenes, Dean Fleischer Camp and Jenny Slate separated years ago, but they love the character Marcel And so even though they're no longer a couple, they decided to get together and collaborate and make a film. And it's about them going through the pain of their separation. Oh, what the fuck? That's awesome. Through this cute little children's film. And like, this is a children's film in that like, there's no swearing. The jokes are like, some jokes are rude, but this is like a PG film. Yeah. Um, It's very experimental. So I don't know how like, like captivated a child would be watching this in the cinema. But if you had it at home... It's charming enough that you could get it. And it kind of goes into the lore of like what Marcel is. And it's kind of like similar to, I guess, what like a certain kind of yokai is in Japan. And I think we have something similar here in Ireland where it's an inanimate object. If left alone for long enough, gains its own spirit and soul and personality. They really, really hammer home the idea of that. Like these are these little living creatures that 
like live amongst plants on the shelves and they have little ladders and they've built little huts and they use everyday objects kind of like how they would in toy story but they use them for different purposes so to him a record player is a treadmill that he runs on to get exercise Mm -hmm. because he's so small and it's this kind of world that you're seeing from this one inch shells perspective and when the whole family gets together you realize that it's not just shells that are inanimate objects there's kind of like thimbles and like the cushions that sewing needles go into one of them is a tampon that was never used (laughs) so it's just all these weird like objects that you would find in drawers that you would forget about for like a decade and all of a sudden you're like oh yeah it's just this like knickknack um, and it's just like the history of the house and the history of the objects within the house that come to life. That's super cute. I love that idea. Yeah, and it's all done in stop motion, and some of it's green screen, but the tilt shift photography, all the dust particles, everything looks so amazing. Have either of you guys watched the new Really Kuma? I yeah, heard it I, wasn't I, great, and that makes so me sad. I'm only hearing this from Michelle, but she was saying there's like so much green screen. Everything like, is green screen. There's no okay, like like maybe if they go into like a tiny office, but almost everything is not a handcrafted environment. And the green screen, you could see a pixel of uh, like of the bleeding of there the was like, green screen. They did a tiny bit of that in the first season, but so much of the charm of the first season was how handcrafted those little environments yeah. were. Yeah. So I guess they were like, there's only so many more episodes yeah. we can do in this apartment. Yeah, with, with yeah. this, it's a theme park and there's so many like action shots mm. like that they have to have virtual backgrounds, but it's almost everything is like fake and just added in and post. Well, I mean like, you know the appeal of Rila Kuma wouldn't necessarily be the same as the appeal of Marcel. So like it's 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 not that the green screens are bad. I think it's just a shame for Rila Kuma specifically, mm. right? Oh yeah, no. Look, I I I, I love seeing stuff up close. Like it's the same with something like Team America when you realize a lot of the props are made out of like man made objects. But I, I know the one the, the the big one of Team America is all the palm trees. The leaves are made out of dollar bills folded and shaped up to look like leaves. Oh, that's cool. And so you can think about that in a thematic sense, but it's also kind of just like that it is what mm. their world is to our scale. Yeah. And I, I love that about stop motion and yeah, yeah. and puppets and marionettes. Same. It's like the just the kind of ingenuity of taking everyday objects and reimagining them as other things. Yeah, like like a little guy would sleep in a matchbox. Yeah, that's super cute. That sounds amazing, uh, yeah, that Brian. Sounds cool, that Brian. sounds like yeah. something I'd love. Oh, it's so charming. And like, it could totally go the wrong way and be like this weird early 2010s cringe humor. Mm. But because they go meta with it, but they don't go like annoying meta. They kind of go like very sincere with the meta. Um, it, it works. That's and the voice acting is like so improvised that it doesn't come across as forced. It just comes across as very natural and there's a lot of mistakes and stutters and kind of like people mumbling their lines Mm. and not wanting to say it again because they kind of trail off, but it works. Cool. Cool. Um, Real quick, I watched the first episode of the Chainsaw Man anime. (gasps) Yeah. Is it everything you wanted it to be? Absolutely perfect. It's really good. Just fucking perfect. Um, What I really love about it (laughs) <laughs> this is going to sound really shitty, but it has art direction. It doesn't have the anime color palette of just the saturated bloom. primary colors with a little bit of bloom. It looks like its own fucking thing. And mm-hmm. it looks different to the manga. They're not trying to recreate the manga. They're making their own anime. And that's what adaptation should do. Adaptation has to elevate because otherwise, what's the fucking point? That is what the first episode of this did. I really loved it. Um, I am so happy with pretty much every decision they've made. There's like maybe a little more 3D in the action than I'd like, but it's like, it's good 3D. So it's like, okay, that's fine. And it's used very well in wide shots. Yeah. I think in a way that might bother some people, but I love it. Everything's very like bleached out and desaturated. Mm. You know, like it's a very like kind of harsh looking show. God damn, it looks so good. And the in- the visuals in the intro are fucking incredible. Would have liked a kind of different song. It's like a very... It's a very, like, show tunes kind of song. And the song in the ending is much better. And I do really like the soundtrack that's, like, played throughout the oh, episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, it's great. It's really, really it's good. It's a very good score. Brian, you've watched the second episode, which I haven't seen yet. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, it holds up. The pacing is a bit faster than I, than I would have expected, mm. but I think they just want to get the gang together. They just want to get power in there. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, fair. Power is very funny, and she is like the comic relief character. Yeah, she's so brilliant. But um, yeah, so far, completely fucking delighted. That like in that state where I just feel so lucky to exist in the reality that this is the adaptation Chainsaw Man got. Because such a weird series, you know, like it was never at the top of Jump. It was never like Jump's biggest seller. Definitely sold more than I think I expected it to when it first came out. But yeah. Chainsaw Man is like the best one if one of, if not the best, manga in the last like ten years, and I I'm so happy that this is the adaptation it gets. Yeah, they really took their time on it, because like the original teaser trailer was nearly like a year and a half ago. Yeah. And then there was crazy. just like a couple of text announcements just to be like, it's been delayed, we're gonna push it again. Then they did the teaser, like a proper teaser trailer. Yeah. Uh like a month or two ago. Yeah. I will have more to say on this at some point probably in a video as opposed to this podcast but yeah i'm very very happy um just b while we're in anime section i've been watching uh the second season or the continuation of the first season i don't know of the spy family and anya got her dog and that made me very happy i like spy family a lot yes spy family's cool i've only watched the first episode but it was really cute but i know um your isn't in the first episode this that is my only complaint with spy family is i'm always like can't wait for yours part can't wait for your story can't wait for more your and like it's it's the lied show and anya show and your is sometimes there and when she is involved it's because her brother wants to bone her yeah, and i'm like thanks anime because because from the first episode it did really have the charm of like a father daughter mm -hmm. like finding each yeah. other relationship yeah. but is that the show or is it meant to be because it's meant to be all three of them trying to figure out that dynamic. yeah no the, the, them as a uh, like the three of them together is super cute i just want more of like it feels like like you're a supporting you want more the, of the queen of thorns yes i want more of her and she, i she's will a really cool say design. the intro to this season there's a lot more you're in the opening so i'm kind of hoping we'll finally get she'll get her moment because uh, she's really cool and yeah enjoying it a lot okay i got one more anime okay, okay. i watched the first episode of urasa yatsura which is invader lum i watched that this morning this is the reboot of it uh with david productions who do the jojo uh anime and this was very much like a gag manga with like contemporary colors on it. The art direction is super nice. It's very yeah, motion lovely. graphics y. Like, because like I guess Ursa Yatsura is used all the time in future funk videos and they always use like two second, three second clips where it's just like a very fun radial burst card with some nice uh, assets and like a girl with love hard eyes. And like that's what that show seemed to be in its kind of like reaction shots, um, but it was a very good setup for what is Invader Lum. Um, yeah, um, I think cute. one of the one of the best anime intros I've seen in the longest time. Oh, it's fantastic! Fucking incredible! Um, yeah, not like Invader Lum. There's other Rumiko Takahashi things that I like better. Oh, yeah. Well, Invader Loma is fun, and like that's that's such an iconic design. Have you ever seen the British dub of it? Yes. Neil, do you know about this? No. Okay, so 20 years ago, maybe 25 years ago, the BBC had an anime night. I think it was on BBC Two. And they showed a couple of episodes of Urusai Yatsura, but it was all dubbed by like three people, <gasps> one of whom was Matt Lucas from Little, Little Britain. You know, the, 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 yes. the, the, the smaller guy yeah, yeah, with yeah. Al alopecia. Yeah. And he voices the main guy in Invader Lum, but it's just full of what? Oh, Oi, mate, what are you doing with my bird? Like, cockney. Holy shit! Yeah. And like they talk so fast and add in all these like unnecessary. Like it, it, it feels like a four kids dub, but done by like a drunk British man. Sounds like Xenoblade too. <laughs> <laughs> it's really worth checking out on YouTube. I might even add it as one of the loot drops because it is just it shouldn't exist. It looks like a shit post fan dub. <laughs> it aired on British television. Brian, you went to the circus. I did. I went to the circus last week. Can we just talk about the circus in general? Yeah. Okay. We all went to the circus as kids. Mm -hmm. um, I find circuses interesting. They've existed for hundreds and hundreds of years, and they continue to exist, but they've always had to evolve with times. Mm -hmm. uh, going to the circus in 2022 is very different to going to the circus in 2002, because I think it was around 
the start of the 2010s is when they outlawed animal performances in circuses in Ireland. In any, court, in, in, in any kind of stage show act, you couldn't do animals. But I remember as a kid and as an early teen going to a circus and it was not out of the norm to see tigers and elephants. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I touched an uh, elephant once at a circus. Yeah. I went into like its little pen and I put my hands on it and everyone was like, what are you doing? And I was like, well, I don't know when I get the chance to touch an elephant again. It was, the elephant was cool with it. Sound yeah. logic. Yeah. And I guess since then, when like an, the, this, this should have been done sooner rather than later because it was very cruel. But since then, circuses have had to kind of figure out what do they do. And so the alternative is human beings going beyond the limit. And I've been to some and they're aesthetic circuses in that they have the clowns, they have tightrope acts. And it's what you'd expect um and they're quaint and it feels like you know you're kind of going back in time last week i saw circus extreme and that may as well have just been like dirt bike rodeo but in a tent and it was fucking brilliant and they start off and like okay it's post lockdown things are opening up again so they bring out the ringmaster sorry there's two ringmasters there's a clown but i don't know if he's a ringmaster because he wasn't wearing a top hat and he didn't have like coattails or maybe, no, no. He had coattails, but he didn't have a top hat. But a woman comes out with a top hat and she starts singing the We're All Back Together song, which is, I, I think, is an original song. And it's. <laughs> and I'm sure you're right. <laughs> lots of people come out dressed as frontline workers and it's thanks to the frontline workers oh, Jesus. <laughs> that we're here and the circus is. I'm not sure I super need yeah. to be reminded of that. <laughs> and that the circus can finally be here in person for you all to perform. Then there's an act and it's Ukrainian refugees and they're proud to be Ukrainian. That bit got the fucking roaring fucking applause. So what, are, what are they doing? They were playing uh, uh, a gymnast couple that may or may not have been in love, but it, it might not have been because of what, what the trauma that they're going through it was insane. Then there was a woman who kept diving into a tank from the very top of the, the big top. And at the end, the water was set on fire and she still dived into the tank. My God. <laughs> there was uh, a steel cage globe and they had a bunch of dirt bike driver er, cyclists in there and uh, they had three of them. That wasn't enough. You need five. And then all of a sudden the globe opened up so that it was like an egg cup. That was insane. And then more dirt bike riders started driving over it when we were right beside it and it stunk of petrol and it was real. I had the greatest time of my life and now I am i can't wait to go to the circus again but I don't know how you top this because this may as well have been like Trochosaurus. I really want to go to a rodeo. Do rodeos still exist in America? Or, oh, definitely. Definitely. Or, or, I'd or, love to or go. has that been like squashed, squashed down because of the animal performance or how does that work now? Mm, no, I... I don't think America cares. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, America, but you know. I think if America. you can't take the guns away from those people, they sure as hell aren't going to let you take the horses. That's true. Uh, the clown was kind of annoying, but then he actually did get me in the end. They did a uh, a bit where they were at an Italian restaurant and they brought out all the spaghetti and then he started throwing the spaghetti at the audience. But all, all the kids got up and started throwing spaghetti back at him. He fucking worked that crowd. And then he, he got was, another... He was a heel. Yeah, he was a very good heel. And then there was another bit where he brought out a kid from the audience. And I don't know if the kid was a plant or not, but the kid was amazing. At what? Uh, he was throwing a hat like a frisbee and then he was teaching the kid to do it. And the kid threw the hat super far away and then it like came back and he caught it like a frisbee. And then the kid came back to the clown and then the kid did a dab. That kid needs to fuck off back to 2018. Yeah, that, that kid. Come on. Yeah. Dude, kids don't know what dabs are until now. That wasn't a child, Brian. Yeah, that, that, was, that was, just... was definitely a small man. Yeah. That's even better than... It was a plant. <laughs> he looked great as a kid. <laughs> it was believable. I think it was the glasses. I'm really shocked at how topical the, the circus is, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Seems like even they're, they're, seems like they're, they're even making the circus political now. That's my... Yeah. <laughs> angry. Well, like, um, I went to Cirque du Soleil back in July at the Three Arena. And that was cool but that was way more just aesthetic over like spectacle mm. this was 100 percent spectacle and i was all for it john i think you can close the window now okay and with that strategy talk so 
Guys, just to shatter the illusion here for a minute, we are, uh, we've got a Silent Hill announcement incoming in 13 minutes. I don't know how we're going to fit this quite into the podcast, but we'll do our best. No, Oni's going to edit it. Nah, but where's the energy in that, Brian? Where's, okay. the, where's, the, where's the live? Okay, Oni, forget everything I said. Yeah. Just, just hoof it. Yeah. That's, 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 that's the way we want it. I want it scrappy. I want it snappy. I want it not flashy. Guys, I beat Tunic. Me too. But you like good ending beat it. Yep. I not 100%ed it, but got the the knowledge share ending. Did you have to use a guidebook? So, what I'll say, I'll answer that question in a moment, but kind of. Yeah. I picked up Tunic again after beating like maybe a third of the game before and just kind of wanted to get back into it recently because I figured I was going to factor somewhere in like my game of the year list. So I, I like that game a lot. And um, I picked it back up, completely fell for the game. Absolutely head over heels in love with this thing. Was so excited to play it every evening. Got really into like the mindset of the game and what it was trying to tell me and like just getting so excited by like finding a manual page. Like we talked about Tunic before, but if you haven't heard us talk about it, it's like a game where the game, you get dropped into this kind of Legend of Zelda kind of world and you're told nothing. And the game is like figuring out how that world fits together and how it works. And so like the biggest thrill you end up getting isn't like any of the items really, it's these manual pages, like these in-game manual pages. You're getting context. Yeah. And like there was a point where I walk Oh God, the thunder and lightning's back. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, because I thought that was a camera flash, but there, it, it's very far yeah, away. Yeah. There was a point where I walked into a room and there was three manual pages my mind was fucking blown. Oh, yeah, yeah, I that was like, room, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna get all this information? That's great. You guys, yeah, that thunder's you, you, lasted so long. You guys are so sleeping long. here tonight. Um, okay. Uh, and there was only one bed. Yep, yeah, that's, that's it. There were, and um, I really loved it. And so I got into the mindset where it's like, I am going to dig into every corner of this game and I am going to figure out all its mysteries myself because like, I started to really get beyond the pale i was finding things that felt like i wasn't meant to find them so brian when you asked earlier did i use a guide to get the true ending oh my fucking god absolutely what is wrong with this game <laughs> like i love this game but i kind of have an issue with it as well where i feel like the true ending of the game and like the game does point you towards a true ending yeah. like you get to a point brian where the game literally tells you there's two ways to do this. Do you want to do, do you want to beat this really hard boss or do you want to try and figure out the true ending? And like, this is a game about collecting knowledge and, and something that I was really, really like vibing with and really just into the entire way. I was like, so, okay, I want to figure this out. So I play a couple of hours and I, I'm just, there's a few threads I can pull on, but they seem to lead to dead ends that don't lead anywhere. So yeah, because at that point in the game, lots of areas are closed off for a narrative reason. Yeah. So you're like, okay, well, I won't go there. Yeah. But am I locked out of something now? Yeah. And it's it, confusing. It became a little difficult to tell what I could do. So like, I was like, okay, I'll give this a look and I'll, I'll just like, like, just point me in the right direction. And like, it was around this mystery of like, what the holy cross is i was reading its manual and most of its manual is like in this other language but this english text kept coming up the holy cross i'm not going to tell you what it is or anything but once i like i kind of had no I, I didn't really know i had like no idea but then like i looked up a guide and i was like oh wait what that's really cool this is such a fucking cool thing but then i read a little more and i was like wait a minute this is what I meant to be doing. And then I was like, this is how I opened the door in the mountain. And I was like, oh my God, like this is one of the most genius puzzle solutions I've ever seen. And there's no fucking way in hell I ever would have figured it out myself. This was a puzzle that was designed to be figured out by 20 people in a discord. And it's genius. Like, yeah, it's a very small, it's, it's like, abs eight. it's so yeah. intricate. It's so well thought out. It's really clever, but like really not something I can see a lot of people figuring out themselves. And if you're like, listening to this and you're like, well, I figured out, I figured it out by myself. You win. You, you did it. That, that's incredible. Fair play. I would have loved to have the sensation of figuring that out. But I guess like for me, 
and the amount of time I can like dedicate to games, it was never going to happen. And it's hard not to feel a little like tilted on that. You know what I mean? Because I do love this game. I think this game is a big thing, but I nearly feel like the, that last true puzzle, it kind of becomes like an A or G. Yeah, it is. Um, and it's not like something like... I, I compare it to something like Witch's House where, you know the way that is two endings, but it's kind of like... It's there if you see it, but it's it doesn't require lateral thinking, which is what this requires. Well, like the thing in Witch's House is you get to the end and you're like, wait, there's that one thing I never figured out. Maybe if I go back there now, and then you go back there now, that's it. Whoa. There is fucking thunder and lightning going nuts. Oh, it's getting oh, wow. closer. That flash of lightning was really scary. The previous yeah. one, there was maybe like a 10 second gap. That was more like four seconds. Just just as so, we keep getting to this Silent Hill announcement. Mm-hmm. So each How second is roughly a kilometer away yeah. from the, where it happens and where you hear it. Oh no, this is so spooky. Mm-hmm. Kind of love it though. Yeah. Love it. Oh, it's great. Yeah, pretty, this is some atmospheric yeah. fucking podcasting. Um, Oni... Whoa, only if, if the thunder noise isn't coming through, could you add some in, please? <laughs> boost it, boost yeah. that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Add some rain. Yeah. Uh, Tunic is a fantastic game. You know, I didn't like the direction it went at the end, but I mean, clearly, there's so much intentionality behind it. Like, I can't really fault it. It's just not. Not, not, th- not what I love. Not yeah. the enjoyment I was getting out. No, no, yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. Like for me, it was like when I wasn't playing it because I, I played it intensely each evening for like two weeks, and when I wasn't playing it, I was like planning. Oh, it's like, it's like the lodged next, in there. Yeah, like it just lives in your head while you're not playing it, and you need to get it out of your system. Yeah, um, I, I got the like regular ending, but I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna have to use that guide to get the, the true ending. There's a lot of. Not that fun, busy work. I'd say so. To get yeah. To the guide, like it would have been like again, to be in that Discord of like the twenty people who figured out this at first would have been the most amazing shit. That's not the experience I had with it. I can't imagine that the experience a lot of people had with it. But I mean, like even with that, it's such a great game. It's so weird. I've never played anything like it. It's it's, it's so interesting that it came out because because originally came out on Xbox, but it came out at the same time as Elden Ring. And it, it like it shares a lot of DNA with it a Souls game. It totally game. does. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like like those people who went with Tunic instead of Elden Ring, I'm sure they got something really special when nobody knew nothing about it. Yeah. Neve. Yes. How are you feeling about Valkyrie Elysium, buddy? Ah. Uh... <laughs> So this is the Square game. In this fact. isn't the Dio Field Chronicles. No, no, I no. I constantly got these two mixed up. There, yeah. there, there are so many like double A Square games that yes. have come out all of a sudden. Yeah, they're releasing a lot of games al- together and Square. I only have so much time. But I started playing Van- Valkyrie Elysium and this is the biggest switch up this series has had. Um... I have played Valkyrie Lenneth, I think it's called. Um, and it's like a PSP port of, I think, the PS2 game. Okay, I don't know if I know that game. Um, and it is a sprite-based game. This is a third-person action game, kind of. It feels like it's something that's inspired heavily by Nier Automata. Like, that seems like its vibe. Okay. Um, aesthetically, it is interesting looking i wouldn't say ugly but it is definitely a mid-tier square game close maybe to something like stranger of paradise that they released last year where it kind of it has a bit of a ps2 360 vibe to it not a bad thing not a bad thing so it's very desaturated uh there's not like it's the textures aren't the most crisp but it's doing its thing there's clearly a black line around the main character and around like say rocks or details. And part of that seems like they're solving a problem they created. So it's like desaturated, they need her to stand out a bit more. They put a black line around her kind of thing. Oh, the thunder is so- I, I've, I've seen that with a few low res games. Um, they did that in the, Sma- in the Smash 3DS game, Smash for 3DS, so that you could identify what was in the foreground and what was yes. in the background. And they're doing a Wii, they're doing a port of a Kirby Wii game that would have been at like 240p, 360p, 
maybe 480p, but like they've they've they have they have they have they have had to kind of define stuff. Mm -hmm. This is a brand new game. It's PS5 copy playing on the PS5. There's a like Square clearly have a mid budget team that are getting to try things, and I appreciate that conceptually. But what I would like from people trying things is some fun. So we've gotten some stuff like uh, Triangle Strategy. Mm. My problem with the bit I played of that, quite dry. Um, Do you feel Chronicle? Like, looks like something I would play. I read the reviews. Narrative seems to be a bit dry, you know? And what was the other one? Um, was that a square one? The Dungeons and... Voice of a voice of cards Not and voice of dungeon cards. encounter. Dungeon encounter. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. another square mid like, one. Same that, kind that, of text. Like, I, like and, and I, there's I, a I, bunch I, of farming life sims as well yeah, that they're I, kind I like of responsible for because it was like, oh, there's stuff happening mm. here. Like, there's interesting mechanics, but fuck me, is there like nothing else? Yeah, and it's like they're clearly trying stuff, and I really, really, really appreciate that about yeah. it. Um, Valkyrie has no personality at all like a lot of her things and you can like she reminds me of 2B but 2B was cold and was brought out of her coldness by her relationships and those side quests and her questioning the world and her kind of coming from a cold character into a warmer character or even the kind of tragedy of her not fully getting there was part of the narrative of Nier. With Valkyrie it's like they're just going for a hard ass that has nothing much going on like she meets this guy uh, who transformed from a demon and she's like, who are you? And he's like, I am a spirit. And that was the conversation. Uh, combat is fine. It's fun. I'm okay with some like loose hack and slash combat. Um, if And she has a grapple hook, gets you to an enemy. You have a lot of like, you have a, uh, some combos. You can fire out some magic. Uh, enemies have elemental uh, weaknesses. Combat's fun. Nothing amazing. Doesn't matter. I'll be in it for the story. Not getting much out of the story until, and like I know there's a timer to the Silent Hill thing, but until another Valkyrie arrives and she's wearing black armor and she looks really badass and she challenges my Valkyrie to a fight. <gasps> there's also a real twink Odin in this. Um, oh. Maybe the twinkiest depiction of Odin I've ever seen. I'm, I'm hoping this will get less dry and that something will that this will like maybe be a game that some people will like like me included like maybe it will be the special hidden gem of the square mid-tier blitz they are doing okay so this isn't you're 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 still going yeah i'm not bored i'm just like oh okay it's another one of these Cheryl! Guys, it's it's Silent Hill hour. It's just we're one okay, what's your what's your, what are you hoping for? What are you scared of? Is, uh, is this a trailer? We're going straight into a trailer. I want pachinko machines. <gasps> oh, it's a trailer straight away. Okay. Uh John, you wanna just turn your mic into your face, Aru? You can film me if you want. <sighs> I'm not filming. You film him. Is that James? Is that the mirror? Is it the mirror? This could be a remake. He's gonna wipe his face. That's his jacket. That's James's jacket. That's not. Where's the chub? Where's the chubby little cheek? Could she really be here? You're gonna have to for me. Mary died of that damn disease three years ago.
so bad. But it's all over now. Are you gonna show Maria? Are you gonna show Maria? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there he is, John. There he is. There's One last old, old triangle face. <laughs> no, no, that like that looks fucking shit. Like, am I am I am I going too hard? What do you guys think? I, uh, I, I, it's no. Uh, Thanks, cap- Konami. Like, I, 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 I kind of prefer what Capcom are doing yeah. with the Resident Evil series. I don't know. Tr- I-, I heard the phrase truly next gen and. Welcome to Silent Hill mm. Transmission, the show that keeps you informed about Silent Hill. My name is Selena and I'll be your facilitator. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that in drive because. Uh, you can go put that to Twitter or whatever. Um, yeah. There's a really good bit where you like turn to the camera and you look really upset. I just don't trust Bloober Team to do that story in justice. And as someone who doesn't care about the series, I think this is funny. Uh, you I'm seem sure. sad. I'm sure. <laughs> I I feel like my my heart has been pulled out. Like just just to like I I know like it's only a trailer, but just there was so much about that trailer where it's like, oh no, you guys don't understand this at all. <laughs> It's great, John. What are you talking about? It looks fucking shite. Those leaked screenshots are pretty accurate. Yeah, they are. It's just... I really hate the key art with Mary's face it's so floating shit. over it's so the like, logo. It's so like a AAA poster. Yeah. Like they want, it looks like they want to turn Silent Hill 2 into like an open world. Mm-hmm. Oh. It just like gives you the entire story. He's looking for her. Yep. <laughs> Do you get it? Do you think they'll announce the Annapurna thing here as well? We'll keep it on the background and we'll see. Okay. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. <laughs> the rumors were true. It was Bloober Team. Yeah, fuck everything. I, I don't know. I don't believe in anything. What's the point? What's the point? I always think with stuff like this, your Silent Hill 2 still exists. Of course. Yeah, so it's not, it's not that big a deal. It's just... It's less Silent Hill 2, and it's more, oh no, this is what the people who own Silent Hill think it is. It's a real sign of the times. Yeah. Like, you gotta make something. Like, the fact that there's a Hocus Pocus 2 out, and that's not a big deal, just to me says a lot, generally. Yeah. It's like, if that came out 10 years ago, people would have lost their shit. Now it's just like, oh, more fodder for the machine. I wonder, is that using the engine that Phantom Pain and that Metal Gear survive? What's it called? Fox Engine? Fox en- was that I, Fox I Engine? That was the, no. was the Fox Engine something else? <laughs> Brian, you beat Splatoon 3. I did, I beat Splatoon 3 and uh, that final boss is very good. There was a bit of disappointment with the final boss for Splatoon 2 because of the reuse where it's the Octopus DJ, but they go in a completely different direction this time. And it's a very, very fun design for a final boss. Mm. And uh, they actually do bring back the Octopus DJ, but this time he helps you. And it almost feels like, you know how you play No More Heroes and the game teaches you all these mechanics? But then when you do a boss fight, sometimes that doesn't matter because it has changed genre. It does that, and I wasn't really into it until I kind of learned the controls of how I'm supposed to fight this boss. And once I kind of came to terms with that, it was actually a very good boss battle. And the idols being bad guys, it was all just a misunderstanding. <laughs> who who would have thunk it? And um, the end credits are super cool. Um, they do a great job of kind of like listing everyone's name, and they're all kind of done in this really cool like graffiti style text. 
and it's a pretty small team overall. They work very hard in this game, and I'm proud of their work. I like Splatoon 3 more than I thought I would, but maybe not as much as I used to like Splatoon 3, but also maybe I'm just a Splatoon guy and I don't know what I want. Also, the color palette of this is blue and yellow, and I thought that was cool because they could have changed that blue and yellow color palette, but they didn't, and it's a nice little subtle thing that I didn't notice, but when I was playing... Pe people seem to like that Splatoon. Yeah, no, it's a very good Splatoon, and the online works great now. Cool. Uh, they've done a couple of patches. They're doing another tree-on-tree -tree event match very soon, and it's to coincide with the release of the new Pokemon games. And it's pick your favorite starter, grass type, water type, or fire type, which which makes sense. Yeah, that totally yeah. makes sense. Uh, just to update you, Brian, on your engine question, uh, Konami abandoned the Fox engine for Unreal, and Bloober Team <laughs> use Unreal Engine as well. Okay, yeah, that so makes that's sense. Definitely an Unreal Engine game. Cool. I'm so devastated. <laughs> Look, if you want a good Silent Hill game, I think Alan Wake 2 might be closer to what you want. I think Remedy make terrible games. <gasps> what the fuck? Yeah, uh, I, I have been hurt tonight, Neve, and I don't care about fucking <laughs> yeah, protecting trying, anyone's yeah, what feelings. The... I'm just going to be it. Re control, <gasps> shit video game. <gasps> oh. Just awful. I like Control. The more distance we get from the PS4 generation, the more I'm like, thank God Control exists and did something different. Because that generation needs Control. Yeah, I know. Your face says a lot. You don't have to say it. I know. It. I know. I'm not going to say it. Um, Neve, we both played Scorn. Yes, we did. Oh, it's on Game Pass, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Nice. So, from the pre-release footage of this game, what was your expectations going in? So, the original trailer made me annoyed because it was one of those like concept trailers with nothing mm -hmm. and so i was like well i don't know what this fucking game is and then i saw some of the thing i was like oh is it kind of a shooter puzzly kind of thing and then when it was all puzzles or at least all of what i have played so far has been puzzles i was like oh okay so i kind of thought it was this but like i've seen a lot a lot of people being like i did not know what this is what it was no i think my expectation because some of the pre-release stuff there is a gun and it be, being on Microsoft, like just platforms, uh, I know it's also on Steam and stuff like that. My brain went first person shooter. Yeah, because um, the gun is kind of like the gun from um, that existence. It's yes. like a, yeah, it's, it's yeah, like yeah. an organic I had gun. I watched the Euro Thug preview of it as well. Okay. And that was all puzzles. And I was like, oh, okay, this is what it is. Okay. So I didn't watch any preview stuff after those first like two trailers, which was mostly a concept one and then a bit of gameplay. So when you start this game, you get a gorgeous opening splash screen, which is like a face kind of like half submerged into kind of flesh and knotted bone and when you press start game and new game the character rises out of that splash screen and i was like oh ooh, gross <laughs> so it was really like that was a really impressive sequence yeah i was really down for some ooky spooky and then i'm walking as this kind of like you know when you have those anatomy skeletons where you see the flesh version so like the, the first layer of skin is peeled off so that kind of version of a person um, walking through a space and I just get to a locked door. Then I get to another locked door and the tension's kind of leaving me. Like I turn the sound up really loud because I'm like, there's no sound happening. It wasn't that dark. I wasn't that scared. I was just more like, okay, locked door, locked door, locked door. Then I got to a just a room and the game has no hood, no like... Uh, <sighs> This is another presentation. Is this a oh. new trailer? Oh. This might be the Silent Hill you want, John. Not where I'm... Oh, Annapurna. Here to be punished. That's good, I like it. Uh-oh. It's Shattered Memories again. Hey, I'd be down for Shattered yeah. Memories, too. From the clear, stories untold and observations by these people. But for you, I think it's more than that. I really liked Observation, the game. I never played it. 
it was a space station puzzler but mm. it looked fucking cool yeah it was like really photorealistic townfall that is a terrible name yeah that sucks I see it's a town that's fallen I don't know if you got that is that uh, don't don't tell me that's not it okay well existence is meaningless and life is pointless <laughs> Look, I'm way more up on what those guys will make than Bluebird Team. Yeah, I can't wait for them to announce it. <laughs> Aesthetically, Observation was very, very nice. Okay. And they had some cool stuff in it. Okay. But gameplay-wise, it was a floating orb with static cameras. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. Yeah. I'm down for a new weird take on Silent Hill. Like, that's, that's what I want, you know? Mm-hmm. Like... Let's fucking kickstart Silent Hill with something really cool and weird. Not a remake. So, um, there's no hood, there's no, like, identifying elements of what you're meant to be doing, um, and I really like that, it's a very pretty looking game. But, I felt getting to a bunch of puzzles, even though they were in a place that looked really spooky, like there was, you'd you'd put your hand in something and a saw would buzz and all of this, kind of took the tension out of it because I was just like, oh, it's a puzzle game. Oh, I'm going to have to do homework. It's a puzzle game that at first gives you no context what you're meant to be doing. Like, you literally have to stumble onto, like, the correct part of the puzzle and from there you can kind of piece the rest of the puzzle together mm-hmm. but I found like the directionless nature of it kind of frustrating and I can kind of see how like that's a little bit what they're going for you're in this yeah. weird alien world and you have to figure it out but I think maybe there's more intuitive ways than to just drop you into this quite large labyrinth with like like six or seven different devices and buttons yeah. and levers. And Wait, oh, so it, so it doesn't even have like a practice tutorial? No, area? Oh, no, no, there's nothing. And like when it gives you that's, the puzzles, that's real deep it end. gives you a huge room and there is loads of things you can press and you have to do this puzzle in a specific order to make it work. So you can kind of like... But then not it's not teaching yourself. you like mechanics step by step. It's, yeah. You, so you I was to... I was pretty frustrated. I put the game down. I came back to it later on and I was just like, I know what this is now. I'm going to try my damnedest. And I did it. I did the first puzzle. I did their little um, sliding tile game. Did that take you long? Took me a bit. It took me so fucking long. Brian, do you remember the last time we were hanging out? I was like, yeah, you know when like games want you to like slide things around? The first, the first puzzle in scoring is a really intricate one. Okay, yeah. so is this like a nine panel or no? no. no. It's so much weirder. Okay, because yeah. like, you know the way you know the way it does that one puzzle in 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 Resident Evil Four, and it's a nine panel puzzle with eight tiles to slide. Yeah. So Brian, I can't even wrap my head around this that. Is, this is like. I think it's like four panels down and about fifteen across. Yeah, That's a but pretty you big also grid. But, but then some of the tiles are like horizontal like, some are vertical and some are single connected. and some of the you can't take them so, some won't go certain ways and the the, the tile you want is uh, connected by two and it's a vertical so it took me a bit but when i got it it was just like bang got it so you get this like little hatch ling thing and it's a little buddy there's a little man in there <laughs> yep yeah a little boy <laughs> and my favorite part after that was the next thing you do is you put him in a buggy <laughs> yeah and then, but you then w- it also took me ages to put him in the buggy <laughs> yeah. because the way you have to do it is you have to like press it and then it goes down and then you have to look at the buggy and press it again but if you don't look at the buggy you just send him back to his little yeah, nest and he's like <laughs> <laughs> oh he's in pain yeah he's, oh, he's so not much having pain, a bro. good time um, like to me, this sounds like Mist meets H.R. Geiger. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, everyone keeps citing Mist. I have never played Mist, so to me, it was like, um, did like you, did, did you Ridged play the John- Witness. Did you? Oh, yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. Because the, the Witness is Mist, but for okay. but for a contemporary audience, because Mist isn't in like it's in first person, but it's step by step. It's not actually like live first person. Mm. Whereas the Witness is that, but the Witness at least teaches you its mechanics. 
Yeah, which I, can't, which I hate him by the way, I don't like that game at all. Because I'm not really a puzzler person, but this has enough aesthetic to get me through it. Okay. So I got there with my little buddy, and I got him out of it using a saw, and it was disgusting. <gasps> and then I got my little buddy's hand, and I shoved it into so, another machine. <laughs> David, so your little buddy is kind of like a... He's like a, a humanoid, but he has like this kind of cockroach shell. And so you don't just get a saw... You get like a scooper, oh, and you yeah. put it in between him and his shell, and just. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah. I sawed him out of it. I got a saw, and it sawed a shell in half. Really? And then he. Because mine, like, ice cream scooped him Ooh. out. Well, yeah. did, you, did he survive? No. Oh, my guy's alive. He followed me around really slowly. He shambles after you. Interesting. Cockroach yeah. will do that. My guy is fucking dead like oh, like like okay, okay I, that's cool. I scooped him out of the shell and then dumped him down a hole and then found his body parts huh i've been calling my one craig and he's been following me around he takes a while but i got i brought him to the door i needed to go and it's so sad because he just falls over all the time you just pick him up and like fuck him into things but like he was he's a good buddy so i have his arm Oh, okay, that's like, how you do it. I ripped off his arm, and that is what I am using. That's wild. Okay, I'm just using the whole man. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Huh. So I'm in the next part. I find a gun. Um, it's not really a gun. It's like a stamper. Uh, kind of like, little, like, like a little, little dick. Yeah, it's a little... Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll <laughs> that, that little That little thing. I uh, got one of those, did another puzzle, and now I'm in a very purple desert. And I've been kind of shambling around there after a bit of a Matrix moment where I was umbilical corded into a thing. And yeah, I am more into it. Like, I think <laughs> I was really disappointed at the start because I kind of imagined it being something else. Now I'm a bit more, I'm, I'm into it now because I, I gave it... I gave myself the time I needed to do it and I'm enjoying it and as I go further its aesthetic is evolving from just the kind of H.R. Geiger stuff into kind of its own thing with the kind of red desert stuff um, so I'm I'm hoping I will like it to the end it is extremely obtuse it's like it is super yeah, hard to know what the crazy. fuck you're doing um, I'm, I'm considering like would I like this better with a guide and I, I don't know I, but I do maybe. I, you really I, I need do, to be on a certain wavelength. I did it sounds. feel good when I figured out when I popped that little man out of his shell and dumped him down that murder hole. I it was good. It felt nice. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, like I hit the end of my first play session um, with Scorn, and I was like, "Cool, I'm done." Like I didn't hate this, I didn't love it, but I'm done. Like it's just not really what I want to play. But it stuck with me. Mm. You know, like, and I kept thinking about it, and it was like, it was kind of cool when I popped the little man out of his shell. Yeah. You, you know, like, I was like, there's there's something to this. So, like, it's a weird game. I think I'm going to go back in. I really like that I got to keep my little man, and your guy died. So I, is your I little man still with you? No, I left him in the door. Okay. I, he's like, not happy. He's I cannot there. emphasize how dead my little man is. <laughs> no, my guy was walking like... Oh, my 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 guy ain't walking anywhere ever again. The I don't know which is kinder, to be honest. It's, yeah, It's a no, horrible place. It's an in. awful, awful place. But um, I think the only thing that like really bothers me about the game is I don't think there's an option to turn off the camera sway. So by mm. the end of a session with this thing, I am... I, I, Brian... I'm blowing chunks. Oh yeah. I'm not doing so. You're well. ralphing it yeah, up. Yeah, I'm ralphing it all over the place. Like I, I really feel sick, and not for the reasons I think they want me to. He even. Oh no, that's like it hasn't affected me, and that sometimes does. So that's interesting. Um, maybe we can mess around with the depth of field. Or maybe something. It, it's it's so weird what games will like hit for certain people with that like Neil Wolfenstein White, never. Yeah, like, like never fine. ever ever. Okay, it says there they're doing a, a coin bank statue of the Shiba Inu from uh, the end of Silent Hill Two. The yeah, joke ending. Yeah, fucking whatever. It's not even the right looking Shiba Inu. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I'm such a fucking shitty shitty fan, right? Like that's what this is. This is this is an old man sad that the thing he likes isn't exactly the way he likes it. You you, you uh, do sound like a bastard. I know, yeah, I do. <laughs> and like, I don't want to be that. Like, I don't. It's just, I did not love the creative decisions presented to me about the greatest survival horror game of all time. Uh, one last thing I will say about Scorn is 
from the trailers of this, I was really expecting it to be quite scary, quite visceral, quite atmospheric. And it's not really hitting those notes for me. No, for me, it's like... quite dry. The emotion is kind of much more like... And this, this is going to sound bad. It's more like, oh, <laughs> yeah, like, that's what I have to do. Yeah. Okay. Like, like, like I when I was playing like um, Alien Fireteam Elite um, a while back, uh, the lighting in that, like it's flickering. I was like making my character look behind them. There was this constant threat or being like overrun. And I felt that tension and the score really added to this. With this, like it has like drone sounds, you know, and like sometimes stuff will kick in. Is there dripping? No, it's ve- that's what it I mean by moist. dry. It's not it wet looking. Like, it's not a very, a very moist I'm, texture. I'm just gonna it should, say it should sound like a like a canal. Yeah, yeah. no, an it's orifice. a very dry. It, like it's more machinery than internal. Like it's mm. less maybe organic. Change later yeah, on in maybe because like they want to hear it, hisses and pistons. Pistons. Also, yeah. I would say just and I'm assuming this changes. Felt like that uh, that original trailer was very very dick like. Yeah. Um. Not a whole lot of dick so far. Well, when I was in the desert, like um, the only thing guiding me was a giant phallic object. Okay, there we when go. When I got closer to it, it was less dick like. But I was like, there we go. Okay, well, I withdraw my objection. Maybe, maybe it will keep going with that, but um, not as atmospheric as I thought. But I'm sticking with it. Liked my little man. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm invested. Yeah. Yeah. There's totally something to it. Um, real quick, guys, I played the complex found footage. What this? I have never heard of that. So you guys know of the phenomenon of liminal space online. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. I've seen a bunch of YouTube videos. I've seen icebergs. I've yeah, seen... Uh, uh, yeah, uh. yeah. And this is a game that creates... What is this? Also during... Silent Hill Ascension. That sounds like a multiplayer Silent Hill game. It's uh, an asymmetrical fighter where one person plays as Pyramid Head and three of you play as survivors, James, Marie, and the Bowling Man. Oh my god, that is not... No, I just made that up. (laughs) (laughs) Face your trauma together. You're right, John. It is a... It's an... It is Face your trauma together. Is the tagline. That's, That's not how facing your trauma works. Don't well, do that shit you, alone. It is. You, you team up with your friends and you beat the shit out of your chronic depression. I wish. <laughs> oh, uh, I feel like my soul leaving my body as we continue. James. So basically what it, what what this video does or what this game does is it takes a lot of these liminal vi- environments and basically constructs these kind of mazes for you to work your way through. So level 1 is the back rooms. Um I'm sure everyone knows what the back rooms are. Yeah. Every- everyone's been on the internet, everyone's seen a video essay and then level 2 is the pool rooms. Then level three is like the hotel rooms. This does not conform to like the wiki dot or like any of this established canon of the back rooms. This is specifically inspired by the liminal space imagery used by Kane Pixels in his found footage videos, which themselves are just kind of like mostly recreations of old liminal space photographs yeah it's just Um, dead malls and offices yeah with that weird off yellow lighting yeah no windows sorry J.J. Abrams coat appeared on screen oh no (laughs) what does he know bad robot what are that's his production company I, 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 I'm aware. Oh, this must be them talking about the next movie. Or whatever movie they're making. Oh, what fucking ever. Jesus Christ. But yeah, like, that, so, okay, that that's the whole setup of the game. And, like, spoilers, there's no fucking monsters. There's, there's literally nothing. This is you working in first person through these different environments. The only, like, mechanic is you can crouch. Takes about an hour and a half to beat... This is one of my favorite games that came out this year. Wow. I was absolutely so fucking compelled the entire time. And part of it is like, 
the design of these levels is so surreal and unusual and just so difficult to process like one the big thing about like a lot of liminal space imagery is that like it doesn't give you enough information to form like a coherent identity about this environment this absolutely fucking nails that every environment is so like serene and weird and beautiful in its own way the sound design is like perfect it's it's all very like ethereal and strange and occasionally you hear something and like occasionally there's like a knock or something like that and it is frightening but not in a way that's kind of jump scary in the way a lot of backrooms content gets but in a way that it just feels so like it is such a like nearly a kind of evolution of like you know when you find that one liminal space photo and you're like oh fuck this is the one this is like blowing out my like nostalgia neurons this feels so real and weird but i know i've never been here this game was an hour and a half of that for me and it was so fucking great i really really loved it like this this is going to be in my top five this year great yep yeah it's free on steam and it i i really recommend everyone give it a shot i found it such a like i don't know just such an experience you know just like Put your headphones in, wait till it's dark, go somewhere where you won't be interrupted. And I I, I, I hope you have a similar experience to I did because it was just, I really loved this. It's really clever that they don't have any character models in the game. It's just environment. Yeah, because and, that, that lets everything look amazing. Yeah, and it just means that the resources that they're putting into the game are going to be in the environment. Yeah, and like the, the lighting models and stuff they have are incredible. Yeah. Like the, the pool room section it's just it's just cream tiles and turquoise water. It looks amazing. Like I, I really love this game and I like I'm gonna replay it. Cool. What's sure. the name of it again? The complex found footage. Okay. You don't need to know anything about liminal space yeah. or any of that shit to enjoy it. It's just cool as is. That's really interesting because like this 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 could have just been like a Slenderman game or something. Oh Brian, I have played so many of those. Cause like the Slenderman game came out like a decade ago, because like the Slenderman game back then was the liminal space as it is now but i just think like with 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 the spaces it doesn't have a figurehead it's just the environment distracted by the silent hill so sorry brian (laughs) it's okay we got another one we got vines we got red vines grabbing a school in a sailor outfit this does not look it looks like a liminal space john huh <laughs> Actually, Brian, not really, because he's. No, it's got too much detail. This looks like a. This looks weird. It's like a forbidden siren. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah it looks way more like a forbidden siren. I wonder, is it? Oh, creepy. What's that fear? Holes in the body? Uh, tracheophobia? I get it with plants sometimes. I think that looks a bit shit. <laughs> Oh, cool! Okay, back in. Yeah, that's vastly more interesting than anything else they've shown. Tripophobia Silent. is the fear of holes close together. Silent Hill F. It has the F that you would see on uh, musical sheets. Sure, sign me up for a Silent Hill F. I'll take that. Story Rikiyoshi. Okay, sure. Yeah, cool. Whatever the hell that is. Guys, I got a Steam Deck. <gasps> gotta say not loving it really yeah the, the feel the play too big okay too big um i was really surprised by the size of it i think like to me this like barely qualifies as a portable mm. and like even, pretty big like what i was thinking about is like okay i go to a lot of airports i know my setup i don't want to put this in my hand luggage because i hate fucking getting on the airplane and opening up your hand luggage and taking the thing out i'd want to have it in my backpack this is going to take up a lot of backpack space. Like, mm-hmm. it is it is a big boy. And I also think, like, for prolonged sessions, you kind of need to lean out on something because it is quite heavy. And then, um, I don't know. I also just, like, the analog sticks are kind of loose, I feel like. Like, I don't like I don't like this to play first person anythings on. And then as well, like, maybe I just got unlucky, but, like, so many of the games I tried on it were, like, really... Even when they said they were optimized for Steam Deck, the controls didn't work, the dimensions of the screen were wrong. 
And like there, I spent a lot of time fiddling in menus trying to get it to feel right. And that's exactly what I don't like about PC games. So like my feeling right now is I think the Steam Deck is going to get there. Hopefully I think like, you know, publishers and developers are going to start working in more solutions from because the Steam Deck is now a thing and it's successful. But I really was not impressed. Wow. And this, like there was very little stuff that I really felt compelled to play. And maybe I just need to kind of like sit down a little longer and try and find some stuff. But like right now, I guess the way I'd put it is that like if I was traveling tomorrow, I would be putting my Switch in my bag, not my Steam Deck. And the one thing I'd say, oh my God, what a beautiful screen. Yeah, it's a nice it, screen. Incredible. Like I was, I played some like old pixel games. I'm not old, but just some like pixel games on it. And like just the, the bleeding edge sharpness was really gorgeous to see. And I thought that was... That was awesome. May I recommend Final Fantasy XIII? It looks great on it. Plays pretty good as well. Can't skip a cutscene. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite part of those games, John? <laughs> um, you know what, Neve? I'm going to take that under advisements. Uh, so, John, for the last week or so, has been hyping up the Steam Deck and trying to get me like feeling jealous about it. Because I like handheld consoles and John's like, do you want to, I, I could bring it over, I could show it to you. And I'm like, no, I'm fine. Cause okay, Brian, you think that is normal? That's so weird to be like, no, don't bring over the new thing you're excited about. No. Uh, so I'm allergic to Steam. I don't use Steam. Like I, I, I have a Steam account. The last time I logged into it was to try out a humble indie bundle from 2012 when they were all the rage. I don't get those emails anymore. Did you, did you did you stop getting those humble indie button emails? <laughs> yeah. At one point they just stop. Kind of like 3D glasses. Like it's just it's, it's not happening anymore. Um I I played a couple of games on Steam. I don't like playing games on a workstation computer. Well, you should buy Steam. Yeah. Deck. That's yeah, what the Steam that's, Deck that's is. That's why for. the Steam. But then do I spend three times the amount of a Switch? on it or do it I... is not three times it's tw- like twice barely how twice. much is this, how much is a switch oled switch oled is 300 no it's 350 i think yeah so it's like less than twice but pretty okay. close well no you'd like you can get like a i think you can get a normal steam for 450 i mm. got the 540 like the yeah middle i got range the mid one. one too yeah. yeah i don't know if there's anything that i don't mind waiting for to come on to switch yeah, like I'm like I'm primarily a console gamer, always will be, just really like it. For me, this was like I have, like every idiot out there, has been seduced by the call of the Steam sale and have bought a lot of shit. And Steam sales are very good. They're very, very good. And there's also just some games that never make it to um console and I hate sitting at the computer. I've worked at for eight hours to play a game. So this is this is my way of getting there. And like it'll like I'll get a dock for it. I will turn it back into a PC in a roundabout <laughs> way. You know? Like that that kind of excites me a bit. And like just I guess the knowledge that like at some point in the next year, there is going to be a game I really want to play on Steam. And I go like, oh, I can play this on my Steam Deck and that would mm-hmm. be cool. But even like, I have a pretty, like, I have like, I don't know, 100, 200 games or something on Steam. But I was like going through the list and I was like, I don't really want to play this handheld, you know? Mm-hmm. This will probably end up kind of being a visual novel machine for me. That is nuts. That, no way. What would you play on it though? I, I don't like, I like it like it, like I'm really interested in playing like the 360 era games and maybe getting some ps2 emulation on okay. it like that is where i'm emulation interested. that okay that's where that's mm-hmm. where like you got me like that is once i start cracking into that that is going to be really exciting for example i don't want to play red dead 2 on this i can play that on my ps5 and have it look lovely um and it will just eat the battery but i will replay red dead yeah an okay. original red yeah. dead is being taken off uh the PS4, PS5, mm-hmm. Xbox uh, One and Series. Yeah, and like uh, the, the idea of having so. like a PlayStation 2 collection on there is like, oh, that's so fucking cool. Because there are a lot of games and the only way to play them is through Steam. Yeah. Because yeah. Steam is pretty decent at archiving games and they, 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 they stay hosted. Yeah, like that Liminal Spaces game that you're talking about, John. I'll play that. I'll try. I'll give that a go oh, on the deck. Put that on a nice, lovely screen that can just. That is the John, the Steam Deck screen. is a great yeah, screen. It, you just you know, said it. You shown it to me. That's no, a yeah. screen. nice large screen. I'm not waiting for a dock. That can to just arrive. envelop you, Neve. 
Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Those screenshots are nice. But anyway, to, to bring this back around, Brian's a total weirdo. And I think sometimes people think like I'm the weird one and Brian's like functional. But in cases like this, I think it proves like how legitimately kind of yeah. insane he is. John oh. just wanted to hang out and Brian yeah. rejected him. Yeah. No, we just did other stuff. I don't want to look at the the, 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 <laughs> See, the uh, <laughs> PC Game Boy. Okay, and so how how uh, like friendly is this to use when it is designed for a mouse and keyboard and you're you're using thumbsticks and buttons? Uh, it depends on what you're playing, to be honest. Yeah. Honestly, a lot of what I played did not just did not feel optimized for mm-hmm. that control set at all. I did Cause, find that frustrating because the UI is not a good example because that thing was a disaster. I've owned Raspberry Pis that have been modded, and even to just get that going, you need a keyboard. You see, like, I don't know if you're like a tinkerer, Neve. Absolutely. I, I love am, messing I, around. I am not. Mm-hmm. Like, I am. I, I hate. Bring me my product. Product work correct. See, for me, I love Apple and Nintendo because of the closed systems. <laughs> Apple has just single-handedly just fucked everyone's computer literacy. Yeah, I love no it. one knows how to use a fucking computer anymore because of their horrible closed systems. And no one knows how to repair PCs anymore because of their horrible systems. It's great. <laughs> no, it's terrible, Brian. Oh, it, 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 it's gotten to the point then, like, if I have to fix, like, a torch or something, I don't know what to do. I'm so bad at electronics. That's, that's a whole different discussion. Anyway, Steam Deck, yeah, I'm, hopefully I'll come to like it. Maybe. It's good to have different opinions. Sure. Quick time events. I hope I've been rec- oh I have been recording. I'm just that gonna- would be- We'll go through it now. Yeah. May as well get it out okay, of the system. Okay, uh, we got some news, some Silent Hill news. Okay, so <laughs> it happened at the time we were recording, so we did react to it in person, which was that was fun. Yep. That was weird. Yeah. Did, you guys, did, you, did you guys feel a bit uh, foggy about that? Or clear? I'm going I'm to say foggy, Brian. I think it's foggy. It's foggy. Yeah, okay. For, it, was, it was a whole bunch of mist. Okay, so first off, there is Silent 2 Remake. And this is being handled by Blooper Team. You excited about that? Um... Look, I'm definitely going to play this thing. I'm definitely going to buy it day one and play it. Uh, I I don't want to hate it, right? Like, that's... like that's. If I buy this game and go into it wanting to hate it, I'm a fucking idiot. Like, what a, what a clownish thing to do. So, look, I don't think it looks very good. I don't like much of the art direction. But this is what it is. And, like... like Let's be real. I'm going to fucking play it. There's no universe I don't play this thing, right? So... You're making the face that James is making in the trailer. Sure, you know. Okay, then next was uh, Silent Hill Townfall, which is being developed by No Code, who previously developed Observation, which, uh, according to Neev, is very good. Absolutely. I liked it. Uh, it's being published by Annapurna Interactive, and uh, they're very enthusiastic about it. Neve, which Silent Hill games have you played? Any of them? Um, three. Three rules. Um, The Room. Room's conceptually done. interesting. That's Silent Hill 4, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's the last one on the um, PS2. The one on the 360, Downpour? Was that it? I think yes. Yeah. So there's Downpour and Homecoming. Downpour, you're a prisoner. Homecoming, you're a war veteran. Downpour. I want to play the one that's on... Ha- uh, is it on PSP or Vita? Book uh, of Memories? Both. Yeah. That the Diablo-like? Yeah. Uh, um, and the, the one that was on PSP. The... Shattered Memories. Yeah. So... No, I like Shattered Memories. Shattered Memories is cool. Some people don't like it. I thought it was deadly. Um, so no one, no two? No. No one, no two. Two is really good. Two is great. But maybe play it with like a spoiler free walkthrough because some bits you might mm-hmm. just need a nudge in the right direction. Yeah, I've only played a little bit of four, and that's kind of what I want to do as well. Like, um, I have a copy for it four for the is, PS2. Four is so, like, it's four is, is really interesting. It's so frustrating. Um, I don't know. Like, I feel like for you, I, I would just be like, oh, Silent Hill 3 is like yeah. where it's at for you. That's a genuinely fucking great character, and it's mm-hmm. about women and their bodies. 
Love them. Yep. Okay. And then... fear them. <laughs> Same. All right. Then there's the new Silent Hill film, which I believe is the third one being made. Uh, it's called Return to Silent Hill. The director of the 2006 movie, the original one. Uh, Boo! The second one's better. Christoph. I like the original. I like the first okay. one. I, 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 lo- I like every, like people. A lot of people like the first one. I think that second one is a fucking just beautiful trash fire of a movie, and I love it. The second one is Carrie Ann Moss in it. Yeah. Uh, Christoph Gans is the director. Uh, he's returning and. It's only in the filming, very early filming and casting process. So I mean, fuck yeah, I love the Silent Hill movies. They should uh, put Mila Jovovich's character Alice in it. I think that would make it better. <laughs> like, like the the canonical so, Pyramid Alice. Head. Okay, yeah. Pyramid Head is walking towards her, and she's in the red dress, and she has the Uzi, and she's yeah. like, "Time to die, bitch." Oh, fucking brilliant movie, John. You should write it. Love I should. It. They should hire me. Okay. Uh, then there's. I think these are two separate bits of news. Okay, brand new Silent Hill game, Silent Hill Ascension, from Genvid, J.J. Abrams' Bad Robot Games, Dead by Daylight developer Behavior, and DJ2 Entertainment. This 2023 game is described as a live, real-time interactive series in which players watch together as the story plays out. So is it like a what like like an fuck? anthology? Dark Pictures style game? Maybe. I guess so. You that, can change the fairness, outcome. That, that does not sound like the asymmet- asymmetrical shooter. Yeah. No. Okay, so you can change the outcome and be part of the scenes. So it might be like, you know... A vote? A, I don't... Okay, I, I get very skeptical when anyone from outside computer games starts making, like, Bandersnatch style yeah. shit. Yeah. And then finally, Konami showed, with a brief teaser, a brand new Silent Hill game called Silent Hill F. It's a new Silent Hill story set in 1960s Japan, written by Japanese visual novel specialist Ryokishi. He has a number in his name. 07. Uh, I guess we'll look up that guy at some point, but um, I mean, I liked what I saw of that. Like, it was, it yeah, was interesting. Yeah, that looked cool. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's an online pen name for an author who's been writing for 20 know. years. I think, I think F looks cool. And oh my god, John! They wrote Higarashi when they cry. Let's fucking go! What's wrong, Eve? Nothing. Um, I think that's actually probably good news for this. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's very interesting. Oh my god. Okay. Cool. Oh my fucking god. Okay. Okay, we're good. If you like good. Silent Hill again. <laughs> yep. Silent Hill's cool now. The gamer's happy. The gamer boy, John wins again. Yeah, you can put away the 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 prepared online harassment. You don't have to do any of it. Yeah, the sock puppets. I would turn the sock them off. puppets. The hate campaign. I'm canceling canceling all of it. Yeah, but keep the GoFundMe. <laughs> oh, of course you want to keep the GoFundMe, Brian. He needs new blood. Let's see how it all goes. Can't pretend I'm not going to buy all these stupid fucking things, but. F looks cool. There's potential in the others. Two remake. Okay. Okay. Um, Bayonetta voice acting dispute. Have this was a this? fucking bummer. Yeah. yeah. This has kind of there, evolved. There's, there, it, it's evolved. So there's like a, a weekend version of the story, and now there's a midweek version of the story. Yeah. And. I think it's like a case of like if you pre-ordered this game where do you draw the line on wh- when when or not you boycott a game and then from there it's turned into an online hate campaign versus wait where, yeah. where, where, where's the online hate campaign uh, everyone's coming for the original voice um, actress Helena uh, Taylor uh, Jennifer Hale um, they're also yeah. going for her the, uh, Camilla as well Camilla like, to turn off his yeah. Twitter but then he was oh. fueling a fire yeah, he as was well also yeah, like, because he's always in character earlier on I was like ah Camilla that's not a great response yeah. now like whatever is happening here that's mm-hmm. a shit and I get English isn't his first language also get that he's kind of a dick on Twitter and that's kind of like his his thing which I've enjoyed up till now but that was a bad response yeah yeah um, should have said no so I guess like if you're not familiar the original actor for Bayonetta who's absolutely fucking iconic in that role Bayonetta grabbing her crotch and shouting welcome to my fantasy zone is as iconic a piece of video game voice acting as there has ever been yeah and um, 
I was really bummed out when I learned she wasn't coming back and she kind of dropped a salvo this weekend about how basically they offered her $4,000 to come back and do the voice of Bayonetta, which unquestionably is a silly amount of money to offer like the voice of this iconic character for the third game, yeah. you know, like the third game. And then it was discovered then that Jennifer Hale is taking over and voicing Bayonetta for Bayonetta 3. She voiced female Shepard in the Mass Effect games. Yeah, she rules. She's very good as well. She voices but... Rivish in Ratchet and Clank uh, Rift Apart. Then there was further developments with Jason Schreier digging into yeah, it's, it. It's worth saying, sorry, what's the name of the original voice actor? Helena Taylor. Helena, Helena Taylor, Taylor also called for fans to boycott the game as well. Yeah, yes. and then Jennifer Hale said, please don't boycott it. A lot of people worked on it, so then people were calling her a scab. Blah, 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 blah. I'm looking through that uh, Bloomberg article that Jason Schreier wrote, and based on the most up-to-date information we have at the time of recording, it says that he has written evidence uh, from people familiar with Platinum and Helena Taylor's negotiations and that she was being offered at least five sessions with each being paid between $3,000 to $4,000. So at least $15,000 for her work on the game. And she allegedly asked for a six figure sum as well as residuals. So it's a bit all over the place. Apparently with residuals, they're pretty non-existent in video games compared to like let's say animation or uh music or something something like that but ultimately it's kind of a bit of a clusterfuck uh bayonetta fans who are really excited about it like i know one like uh just canceled their pre-order because they just even not, like with the developing stuff it just kind of feels bad you it know? has definitely put this like miasma over yeah. the whole fucking yeah. thing yeah. and it sucks i think the one thing you can take about it because i saw other people as well digging up receipts on both the voice actresses yeah going going through their twitter likes yeah. and twitter replies from a couple of years and i back. thought that was shitty because like ultimately when it comes to people unionizing and getting better pay that's kind of what the larger conversation should be here is that va artists aren't paid enough and this happens all the time and people get replaced and the unions can't protect them or won't protect them and when it comes to people being in unions there's not going to be people you agree with in them, but the point of a union is to protect everyone um, and get them living wages, and that that is the point. It, it sucks that some people are shitty, but like to kind of justify your rationale for buying something by digging up receipts and being like, "See, she's a shit person anyway." I think like I think look, it's really immature. With shit like this, I think it's important people decide like where the line is for them, what they are and are not okay with. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I'm still keeping my pre-order. Oh yeah, I think people should probably if they like if they want to play it, go play it. Yeah. Well, like for me, like and, and, the, and, like, and the best alternative is you wait a couple of weeks, you buy. Buy second, it second hand, yeah. Because yeah. then it's just it doesn't go to developer, yeah. it doesn't go to anyone. It's and just like, between for, for me personally, like there is absolutely a level that I just won't have anything to do with the product with. It's like this is difficult, it's close, but it's not there. But it's it's like it's a difficult one as well from a lot of different perspectives because it's kinda like, well then And the situation isn't black and white, it's a it's a gray it very area that's it blows out into this evolving. other conversation about like, well like what about then the you know the programmers that make this game, but then that becomes difficult as well because those people are paid salaries, you know, with mm -hmm. and presumably with benefits. It's a it's a conversation that very quickly blows out much beyond voice acting very into very quickly into like the larger games industry, and it's it's a difficult one. But generally, when I see a dispute between like a company generating millions and millions of dollars in a single person usually um, I'm, I'm on the side of the single person and like it's the yeah. same here like I do think like even if it's like even, even if they're saying they offered her 20k and she you know she she wasn't happy with that she's the voice of Bayonetta I've worked in animation prod or TV shows and stuff that have like union voice actors like i've worked on my little pony and tara strong voices twilight sparkle but then i've worked on my little pony projects that use voice alikes yeah same with transformers i've worked on i've not worked on stuff where peter cullen is optimus prime but i've worked on stuff where he it's a voice alike 
Yeah. I think it, so. Is so is Jennifer Hale just going to do an impression of Bayonetta? Probably, and she probably do one well. Because because she yeah, has I good mean, range. I mean, she's great. Yeah, mm. she's really good. Yeah, and like the way you said, it snowballs out, and it's like, what about the developers? What about everyone else? Which they, they should get paid more. The answer is yes. Yeah. Yep. Like like people like there is investors who make money hand over fist. The the original game came out at the peak of PS3 and 360. Mm-hmm. Bayonetta 2 was a Wii U game, so it probably didn't sell well, but then it came out again on the Switch. Yep. So I'd say over the last couple of years, that Switch version of Bayonetta 1 and 2 um, has, has, has has ticked away. I think, like, I could also see it being, like, Revengeance, where, like, those games just never stop selling. Like, maybe they're never number one, but yeah. they're, you know, constantly selling they in had the, the tens of thousands. Yeah, yeah, they had a re-release. They had the, like, Bayonetta one would vanquish bundle. Like, mm. they're always selling them. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, still beloved games. Okay, we got a good new story here. DualSense Edge is 240 euro. That's a lot of money. That's just ridiculous. That's all I wanted to say. Just absolutely ridiculous. How much is the uh, the really expensive Xbox controller? What's it called? Uh, the Elite? the Elite, Elite Mark II. Uh, let's have a look. Xbox. Because that's to me what the competitor is. One hundred and seventy nine. I know with that, there's a lot of like. You, you, you can buy it off the Microsoft store and you can yeah. get custom color palettes and everything. This is just like an off-white kind of silvery jewel sense that's going to be really heavy and metal. Yeah, because you can get the uh, Xbox Elite from Smith's for 120. Like, it's just, I don't know. There is a there is a gulf in price here that seems bananas. I don't know who buys this thing other than someone who's just an insane, like... A Sony collector and they need to have it like this is nearly half the price of what the PS5 was because now the PS5 is yeah. 550 oh that's such a fucking crazy way to contextualize yeah. it but it's too much money it makes me worried about the VR I think that thing is just gonna be sky high yeah that's not gonna be an entry level fee mm-hmm um, yeah it just sucks I just thought like I just thought that was an insane price it's very anti-consumer that sucks Emails. Brian, buddy. Yeah? What do you got for us? Wait a minute. What? How do we even get emails? Oh. <laughs> Ask let's fight a boss at gmail.com. Well, what does that mean? Like, that's just a string of words to me. Oh, uh, you can use like one of these machines, like computer or something, you just type in like... At the, st- at the top it says two and you type in ask let's fight a boss at gmail.com you use a machine you put letters into a machine yeah. and we get the message in the correct order okay. and it makes a word sometimes if you have a bunch of words together is, it is makes this sentence. making any sense at all to you Neve? she's shaking her head you, you can't hear I it I gotta say I was yeah. just looking at um, the tweet picture of your face <laughs> <laughs> it's a good really face it's pretty good yeah ask let's fight it, a boss I just like in the last panel you're not there like I think you mm-hmm. actually like fell back um, okay, ask that's why the boss at gmail.com. And I'm going to put a call out. Send us some more emails. Uh, we got some emails. Send us some more. <laughs> <laughs> Brian is not pleased. Um, you could do better. Just... Brian, what, what's, what's the mark of a good email? Oh. I'm going to read one out here. Okay. This one, you got to think on it, but I think you got to think, think on it from the heart, not from the head. Okay. Now, they didn't use their human name. They just used their online name, which is Phinexior. I, I'm not sure how to pronounce what is typed before me. What song would you like to learn singing for? Hype Hi, Hi Beast World Breaker Brian. Psycho Heaven Killer Neve. Loadsome Peanut Butter Eater John. I am so fucking devastated. You've got such cool names. <laughs> this person is obviously capable of great names and designated me something that I did not like. In case the title wasn't clear enough, is there a song that for some reason you'd really like to learn to sing yourself or others or for yourself? Uh, their example is, for some reason I really want to learn singing uh, Davola and Papala's song. It's just so good. Listening to it isn't enough. Um, I once uh, tricked a ex-girlfriend of mine to learn 
piano versions of the original near soundtrack i was just like just listen to this lovely song definitely not a video game song she's like wow what a beautiful album and she like learned how to play a lot of them and i was like yep definitely not video game music oh that's really sweet and kind of psychotic neve yeah i know yeah. it was great she played it at her grandfather's like 88 or some shit and i was just like wow. hell yeah <laughs> that's did she play a meal sacrifice yes fuck yeah i bet grandpa no was idea. like whoa it's a meal sacrifice <laughs> That's my favorite shit. Um, I have a deep voice. I would love to be able to do like a Barry White song. Like the way he holds a note. Oh my God. I just like, just like a, like a, like a proper jukebox Barry White track. I'd love to be able to do like a solid rendition of one. I don't know if I have one. I don't think I, I think about singing very much. Do you, oh. do you sing in the shower? Yeah, totally. I wish I could sing. My One of my go-to karaoke songs is Natalie and Brulia's Torn. And every time I sing it in karaoke, I go, oh, well, I am not able to do this. So I would like to do it, uh, to have the ability to do it once and do it well. I think I'd, I'd like to be able to rap. Because then, 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 I, then I could battle people. Be good. And I think that'd be fun. I'd say good skill. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what else I'd like to sing. Um... I'd love to be able to just do like a really, really good version of Happy Birthday and just bust it out. <laughs> uh, that is it's the most just like Brian fucking answer, just kind of a little, a little kind of tinged with like mundanity, but like deeply corporate. <laughs> also, I want to be able to sing at both of your weddings. You can sing at my wedding. Here is the groom. Isn't he handsome in this room? Oh my god, fuck that. The bride has just walked in. My attention is at 100%. Her appearance is divine. Fucking brilliant, Brian. That's pretty good. Yeah, you're very good. Two women holding hands. Tis Neil and Rebecca. Elvis is watching upon he's waiting for me to finish my sweet little ditty <laughs> it'll be two euro fitty brilliant thanks brian i mean you, you got it yeah, yeah but job. like with that i don't know i've just I, i'd love to be able to have the full range and just you're nearly there know, brian you got a good yeah. voice i bet if you took some singing lessons you'd do well <sighs> Maybe I'll do singing. Do singing lessons, Brian. <laughs> I think it's time we got a new thing. Okay, yeah, because I'm doing night classes, and I think singing lessons was one of them. There you go. Take some singing lessons, do some DIY, learn how to make costumes. I, I could definitely, I could definitely sing better than Pierce Brosnan does in Mamma Mia. Oh hell yeah! That dude <laughs> sounded like a dog in heat. <laughs> <laughs> he was useless, and I love Pierce Brosnan. We got one more, Brian. Oh, we got, we got plenty. Okay, okay. I just want more emails. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, um, no, I don't like that one anymore. <laughs> okay, Astral Blaze, where's Dong Man? Hi, let's fight a boss. Neve mentioned Brian having giant tits in the metaverse, and it made me. <laughs> that does. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> I, I do like how metaverse comes into the news once a month, and it's like, nah. It's for the, looking shit. Yeah, for, it's just like, dude, what are you doing? You've like so much money, and it looks like, like an Xbox avatar had a coma. Like, uh, it looks so lame. Um. Neve mentioned Brian having giant tits in the metaverse. And I it, don't remember this at all. That sounds like so. And it made and it made me wonder what are there? Okay, are there sex robots in the Mega Man universe? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Uh, which I guess is where's Dong Man. His full name's Rock Hard Man. <laughs> if so, are there common enemies that are everywhere, or are they boss? No, they're boss sex robots. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you got you got Dong Man, you got uh, Tit Man, Vagina Man, I guess has to exist in some capacity. You got Orgy Man. He's just like covered in holes. Yeah. Uh, I guess you've got <sighs> that got a little laugh. <laughs> yeah, Calm <come>, Man. <laughs> Oh, he's, good <laughs> he's fucking blasting it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other Mega Man boss robots you think could have been fought off screen, either due to their obscenity or mundanity? Like, is there a library man and he just scans ISBN numbers? Like, there has to be like checkout man. There has to be like shopping cart man or trolley man. Like, there has to be uh, airport security man. Well, I mean, like Mega Man, like 
10 had literally like dust man. <laughs> Was he just Sandman? He, he was just a dude who was good at dust. Um, I want like uh, bank ATM man. That's gotta be like bank teller man. Car park man, like that shit. Sucks. I want like a guy who like specializes in like audio mixing and his attacks are all like, I'm gonna make things sound weird, Mega Man. <laughs> <laughs> gonna mix it up, man. I pitch your voice so low. Mm hmm. I think, no, because there is Sound Man and like Wave Man and they do use air frequencies and they are actually pretty fun battles because they make you like fight upside down and they That's cool. fuck with the like physics. They're usually good battles. Yeah, um, but this, this guy just can't do that. No. I think it'd be cute as an intermission to have Barman and it's just Mega Man getting a drink. I want Woe Man and it's just a, like a human woman. <laughs> and she's like, why am I here? This is stupid. I need to collect my kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. I, 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 yeah. The, 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 it, it has limitless options. Okay, yeah. bonus question. If you were a Mega Man ba boss, what would your gimmick and zone be? Well, that's good. I always find, like, the, what would your X be if you were X so hard? You yeah, could be on like, the flies, You could be, right? like, Clown Man. You could have a circus level. Is that a thing? Do you know, I actually would be into that because I am, like, fascinated by circuses. Next time Circus is down, happily recommend it. Fucking brilliant. Okay. Um, I want to be... What are those, like, s big supermarkets called? Like, old, like you know, like... Okay, I want, like, a big supermarket as my... Mega Marts? Yeah, and then I just want it to be, like, Mega Mart Man, and Mega Man is like, Hey! And he's like, what? It says Mart in the middle. <laughs> and I throw like shopping... Like Starbucks? Yeah. What about <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. you got in. Starbucks. Yeah. Uh, I like Brian's answer to that, but me. <laughs> no, Neil. That's fair. Next question. You don't want to have like lesbian bar. You don't want to be like lesbian, lesbian. Man. <laughs> but that'd be complicated because then Mega Man would have to be like, listen, just so we're clear, I actually do support lesbians in all their forms. You just so happen to be like, they'd have, there'd be a lot of yeah. free. Aunt. It'd be awkward. You know? I, I just don't like your employer, Doctor Wiley, and mm -hmm. she's like, yeah, me too. But you know, here we are. And you are a homophobe for hitting me. <laughs> <laughs> no! You've got to have the homophobe beam. That's the only way to... But that's in a different... That's from, like, homophobe man. And you actually have to... <laughs> yeah, have to man, every, everyone, everyone, everyone loves beating the shit out of homophobe. <laughs> yeah, man. and you get homophobe beam, and that's the only way you can, like... Uh, like, like solve you, you, that puzzle. Like, you, like the little the little door opens. You know the one that does it, like, kind of picks up, like, yeah, pixel, yeah, yeah. and you get inside, and he just goes, why no straight pride month? <laughs> it's 11 months a year, boy. Fuck off. Uh, where does the name Let's Fight a Boss come from? Okay, I think it was either the first or second No, Ron, hang on. Neve, where does Let's Fight a Boss come from? It comes from a song on um, No More Heroes that you liked and recommended. Right on. Mm-hmm. There you go. Was it at the end of the first or second episode the name was suggested? End of the first episode. Of the we were actually sitting right here talking about e3 2015 e3. At, the, at the end of june if you listen if you if you're on the patreon if you listen to the black tapes if you listen to that first episode we don't say the name of the podcast once during that entire episode because i hadn't we hadn't come up with one and then we turned off the mic and i said what if we call it let's fight a boss why did you pick that one i just thought it was like it was fun and like it was kind of enthusiastic and like we're all a little spicy and it's got some power that. words in there it's, and, yeah. it's got and a then, sense and of, then it yeah, also togetherness. boss cast mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that works and yeah i guess the initials the anagram of lfab 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 mm -hmm. i didn't see coming yeah <laughs> but i see that lfabers came, worked you see that, see that's because player unknown battlegrounds was called PUBG, and that's so good <laughs> But then I was like, Elfab is kind of the inverse yeah. of that, and it's just, it rolls off the tongue. Elfab's kind of terrible, but like in a way that I like. Yeah, it just you know, of, like it, it's kind of cool. It, it's kind of turned around back into being cool because it just exists and we've all accepted it. I don't know, I think naming a podcast is one of those things that's always going to sound weird and you say it, and then you say it so many times that you never ever think about it. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it just feels natural now. So, Astral Blaze, thank you. Uh, do we have one more? This is from Josh, Guilty Pleasure Games. Hello gang, I was wondering if there's a game that's just a guilty pleasure that you enjoy playing. Like a game that's just really, really bad, but for some odd reason, 
you really like it or there's something else about it entirely. This is kind of like most of the games I kind of end up playing. Um, Outriders is my big one. Love it. Why do, do, do you feel like guilty about that? Well, I don't feel guilty about it. I just like the story is shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's it's hard to get a game. Um, getting someone else to play it with me, um, like I got Stephanie to play with it. She's like, yeah, like it 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 barely has its own identity, but it has enough going on to keep me there. Like it like I like its moves and stuff like that. So it's guilty in the sense that it's mindless. Like I'm not okay, thinking. Okay. So and the fact is that you is could it, be playing is it the kind game. of thing where like maybe the like art side of it is very minimal but you just really enjoy the sense of playing it yes okay it's pure gameplay for me but like i when i play something like that and i play them for hours like so much i've played so much outriders uh when i play something like that i always think in my head i could be playing a better game yeah <laughs> you know yeah. I, I never think that while playing it i always think it directly after. yeah or i look at my hour count and i'm like oh, i could have been like i don't know like 10 to 15 better long games yeah uh mine's kind of similar in that it's like dude what are you doing with your time okay i love tetris i like versions of tetris like tetris 99 is fantastic i recently played tetris effect because it was part of the ps plus extra library that game is fucking amazing i, I heard really good things it's about that game. so good like i it is an experience and it was totally worth playing i was i was like how the fuck do you make tetris good again tetris effect still though i will occasionally just type tetris into a browser and play the browser version of tetris even though i have access access to like better versions of tetris i will play shittier versions of tetris you know also the game boy version of tetris that was a pack-in that's a really good version of Tetris. Yeah, that's, that game's cool. But it's just one of those games that is available on so many platforms. Like, why do I play the, sh the the lesser versions of it? Yeah. I have like 60 hours in Senran Kagura Burst Versus. I was tired. It was January. You needed a titty. Brian, it was Christmas. I played that game in my parents' spare room. You really... Yeah, you really kind of like descended yeah i just regressed like, is regressed yeah no yeah, yeah, yeah. regressed is word sorry you were returned to a teenage job yeah i that's kind of what i do over the holidays i'll just you do oh yeah no yeah because 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 then you were showing it to me in january yeah and we did the show to both of you yeah and, and and we and the way you did it was you wanted to show us the playstation live hosting thing where you can like watch someone your friends with play a game and if you wanted to, you could take over. And I didn't, I didn't want to, I just wanted to watch John stream. And so he was streaming for me personally while I watched him play in San Kagura. And Rebecca came in and was disgusted at both of us, especially John, but especially me, because I wasn't even playing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And John was like, check this bit out. I could sit Rebecca down and show her San Kagura and she would do fan art of it. Oh, yeah. it's a good game. Yep. That's my answer. Yeah. And that's the answer patreon shoutouts patreon.com forward slash lfab okay we're running out of steam let's burn through these let's, babies let's fucking get it done um if you want to donate to the let's fight boss patreon remember that bit earlier when i was like you can listen to if you go back and listen to episode one can't do that without the Patreon. Yeah. And what's even the point of living if you can't do that? And occasionally, I find an old episode I added to the Black Tapes. There's mm -hmm, approximately mm -hmm. 25 to 30 MP3 files there of us when we didn't know how to do a podcast. But now we still don't know how to do a podcast. But we have people who kindly give us money. And thank you very much. Yeah, we appreciate it. This first one is from Idris of the Milk Cult. My three favorite Irish people, <gasps> Neve, <gasps> Brian, and Super Eyepatch Wolf. Sorry, John, he's better than you. Oh my god. Um, this one's from Mog. What's your favorite not safe for work animal fact? Oh, I got a good one. Ooh, I got a good one. Yeah, go on, you go first. They are always naked. <sighs> they are. Oh, you just, oh, wow, okay. It's true. That That is a technically accurate sentence <laughs> what's your one Brian uh, duck penises fall off and regrow annually 
What Jesus, the fuck? what? Uh, and they are corkscrew shaped. And I knew then, that bit. And then duck vaginas are corkscrew shaped, but in the opposite direction with lots of false cavities. Because the female duck, which is just called a female duck, uh, will only uh, loosen the muscles when she has a suitable mate. Okay. I can't really, like, get too specific, but just what complete fucking nightmare assholes dolphins are. Yeah. Just oh, yeah, they're, the absolute worst. They're creeps. They're just awful. Okay, and then this one is from Vito, and oh, do your best celebrity impressions. Okay, here's my one. Hey, it's me, I'm Vince Vaughn. I'm from comedy films. <laughs> Guess I'm <John>. da- <laughs> Danny DeVito. <laughs> John loves when I... It's been a couple of years since I heard Brian's face come on. It's so good. Like, guys, have you seen Wedding Crashers? It's really good. And, like... And, like... The scenes that he's in... In that... Um, that movie with Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson... Where they're the where they're in the car... What's that fucking thing called? Okay, I'm going to have to type in... Ben Stiller, Owen Wilson car movie... fucking hate this shit I have to <laughs> Starsky and Hutch 2004 <laughs> Vince oh, yeah, Vaughn plays yeah. the baddie in it Snoop Dogg plays uh, not a pimp in it good for him yeah Neve, what's your best celebrity impersonation I did it it was she, Danny DeVito she was oh. Danny DeVito what, sorry could you do it again I missed it hi I'm Danny DeVito oh I thought I thought we had just turned on Always Sunny or something okay cool yeah. you don't want to be it's like much. I'm the trash man no we watched that episode I'm not doing this literally as you came in <laughs> That's a great episode. It is. Great. I, oh, I think it's yeah because I think I saw Maniac, yeah. uh, played by Rowdy Roddy Piper. You gonna do one, John? Uh, I like I like doing Vince McMahon. Go on. And specifically Vince McMahon, uh, in trying out draws when draws came into his office and he's like, mm, okay, well we're now we're, we're not gonna call you your name. We're gonna call you puke. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 not like puke. More like. Puke. Did he do that to someone? Yeah, he did. Oh yeah, Beyond the Mat is a fantastic documentary. Oh Eve. no, I really recommend it. Oh, my oh God. My, he really relishes certain words. <laughs> oh, mm, yeah, I, I love it. Yeah, that's Vince McMahon. It is. Okay, this one's from Raw, and it is. If I wrote this when I first joined the Elfab Discord, this would have been read out by now, February twenty twenty two. But now that I've waited this long, I can only assume it's 2024 uh, and I'm probably dead from old age. So I just want to say I hope the podcast is going well from beyond the grave. Well, you know what, Raw? I changed it up so that we do six readouts instead of trees. So you got bumped up. I hope you're still alive. Yeah, me too. Keeping it raw and not saw, thaw, law. I don't know. Just read the next one, Brian. <sighs> this is from Bit of Streaming. Ever notice Sonic's name is an anagram of coins, yet he collects rings? That's that's a very good observation. This next one is from look.jpg. I just want John to say he is the wrestle boy and he's the one who shimmies. Oh, and also the Daft Punk split today just to date this for when it's read in five years we're we're getting through them faster yeah this is that that was on the 23rd of february 2021 um i am the wrestle boy i am the one who shimmies what's that i I thought that was like i don't know maybe breaking bad bit i don't know oh yeah god i don't want to do the i am the the danger things anymore they were loot drop we found something on the internet for you to watch here it is Uh, you know what Roman Reigns' theme music. Uh, been listening to it a lot on runs. Very powerful song. Also has the regalness and the responsibility that is placed on, um, on that man's shoulders. Uh, a truly iconic wrestling song. Just as iconic as like The Rocks or Austin's or Bret Hart's. It's fantastic. Listen to it while you work out. Uh, mine's going to be the Lolita podcast that I talked about earlier. Uh, go listen to it. It's very good. Also, Caroline Polacek released a new song on Monday. It is very good, but not seasonally appropriate at all. It's very summery, and it is now spooky season. I don't know how to type her surname. It's okay. I'm going to Google it, because that's what I, I always have to Google someone's name. And it goes, did, do, did you mean this? And I'm like, yep. 
Copy paste it. Uh, I, I somehow ended up with tree loot drops. Okay, uh, the British dub of Ivnader Lum or Sayatsura, just you, you gotta hear it, it's ridiculous. Uh, then there's a YouTube channel called Clada Records. And these are poems read out by Irish people. This one is read out by our president, Michael D. Higgins. I think that's the one I picked. Stony Grey Soil. And so it's just motion graphics, light animation, visual poems. Yeah, cool. They're very good. And I wanted to try and find a YouTube channel that had like less than 100 views. So I found one. And here we go. It's Irish. It's artistic. It's fantastic. Then I also want to say I have made a fun little side Twitter and it's called at unusual Mario's and at the time of this podcast it has already begun to exist and what it is is every day I will post a picture of a Mario toy from the 80s or 90s that could be a plush toy Sofubi could be a phone card it could be um, one of those weird little erasers that are like only like half an inch tall and I plan to try and do a picture every day because Mario Mania uh, 30 years ago was something else. I'm your first follower. Cool. Oh, I'm your second one. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to give you a little signal boost. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I don't have that power. I do a little bit. Neat. I do. You got numbers. Yeah. You're a big deal. Thanks. You're the favorite person on the podcast. It is true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, and I, also, I promise never to type any words. I just want to do pictures because if you type words on Twitter, you get in trouble. Yeah. Constantly. Yeah, so it's just dumb. Yeah. Just pictures. I get canceled so often on Twitter now, I don't even notice it happening. <laughs> just like a couple of hundred people will blow up in some corner of the internet I've never heard of. And then like three weeks later, someone will be like, oh, like that thing that happened a couple of weeks ago. And I'll be like, what? <laughs> The internet is stupid, but at least you've got a podcast to listen to every two weeks. Hell yeah. And you know what? You're doing alright. Bye. 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 Bye.